Mean. Number five zero Sunshine. Number seven four two three Triple Shot Misto. Number eight zero one one Love Hurts. Number T eight hundred Titan I Am. The captain this evening. Number eight one three Blue Shelley. And then on the bench we've got Emma and Violet Assaults. All right, sounds good. Alrighty, so they're going to come off the track and we're going to take a break for the national anthem and uh, and then we'll be back with all the derby action right here on coloristsports.tv. All right, see you in a minute. I will ask you all to please rise and face the flags in the north and east sides of the arena. Gentlemen, remove your hats. Foreigners, play along. And here to present our national anthem tonight, please welcome Kathleen Schmidt. Oh, Lucy, can you see? Spangled Banner. That was, was enjoyable. It was very rousing. It There's, was very rousing. Yes. <laughs> and now, now we're going to get into some of the some of the first of the Derby action this evening. The first 30 minutes coming up here for us. Looks like taking the star for the United States Pummeling Service going to be uh, uh, number 22, Phantom Menace, in the dark blue and red. And the daisies are in kind of a light blue and yellow. I guess maybe you'd call that aquamarine. <laughs> Perhaps. We don't have to get that specific. People at home are like light blue, dark blue. I'm pretty sure. True, but I like to call it as I see it. Aquamarine. Uh, so jamming for the Doomsdaisies, it looks like we have Wild E. Coyote. Uh, it looks like, so Men has changed her number from uh, the, what used to be R2D2 to 22. And interesting fact, it's because numbers are changing, uh, coming up very soon, to where you can only have numbers in your number. That is correct. The only, um, for 2016, all, uh, at least for all sanctioned games, you have to have numbers in, in your number so a lot of players that didn't have that have decided just to go ahead and do it now exactly now phantom is coming off the line quickly takes lead jammer gets all the way around picks up uh three points or actually all four points no i'm confused here three points three points there we go. says Cruel three points Luke. for phantom menace and she calls off the jam now wildy coyote did break out of the jam and was chasing after, but unable to reach the pack before that jam ended. Right, a quick jam, just kind of a hit it and quit it type of scenario. So who do we got for the daisies lined up here? Uh, it's Frack Attack for the 
Daisies. And for USPS, it looks like we have the Devastator, affectionately known as Tater. Now, Frack really driving the pack as she comes off the line. Lee Jammer uh, got all the way out front there. Tater, meanwhile, though, pushed out. Going to be recycled. Now, she's taken off the helmet cover. She may be looking to do a helmet cover pass, but her pivot, Tootsie Roller, is at the front trying to stop Frack from earning five points, which she just did. She just did that, yes. Star has been passed to Tootsie Roller as Frack is back around for another scoring pass. Tater is unfortunately going to the penalty box for a back block, so power jam for the Doomsdaisies. That's what they want right now. Frack already picked up another five points, so that's going to put the Daisies at ten in our first lead right. change of the evening. So far it's 10-3 uh, Daisies, and we have a minute four left in the jam. And there go another five points for Frack. She makes it look so easy as she comes up on this stop back. She just walked right through the last time. And this time coming in, I heard a whistle blow. It sounds like, yeah, it's going to be a back block for Frack. So jammer switch out. That's it. Power jam going to the United States Pummeling Service. Tootsie Roller now with the uh, star coming into the stop pack and yep. looking to uh, make some points for the Pummeling Service. And she has 30 seconds to get some points, so we'll see what she can do with it. <clears throat> and actually, it looks like it's going to be a slightly shorter power jam because, again, when a jammer switch happens, the penalty is for the jam second jammer is only as long as the first jammer serve. So here comes Frack back to the track. She's going to go in front and go all the way around. Meanwhile, Tootsie Roller fighting against Coca Rola Diva. Uh, there, trying to get out, but Coco just following her back and forth and able to drag her way back and recycle. Ah, uh, Coco and her assets. And her assets. That's a great. That's a great one there. <laughs> I say that with all the love in the world. Believe me. All righty, up for the Doomsdaisies this time. It's going to be Surrey Brawl, number three LBS or three pounds. And for the Pummelers, we have Blue Shelly taking the star. All right, first time for both these jammers this evening, and we're only third jam in, of course, so we'll probably see them a lot more. <laughs> and I don't want to jinx it, but we have had no blocker penalties thus far. I have not seen any blockers get a call. Doomsdaisy's continuing to drive the front of the pack here now. Triple shot Misto hanging up. Uh, Surrey Brawl tight, and I am trying to drive her to the outside, but Surrey Brawl out, lead jammer for the Doomsdaisy's. And a hit by Fallen Angel in the back of the pack sends Blue Shelly all the way back the length of the engagement zone. Blue Shelly starting her time through again as Surrey Brawl coming in, takes it from Titan I Am to the outfield. Going to recycle all the way back as well. Misto dragging her as far back as she can. I heard a whistle up at the front. Let's see what happens there. There's our first There's our penalty. And that's Alex Termination, number 27, heading to the penalty box. It appeared to be an out of play, but it was back in the back corner, so I'm not sure on that particular call, but that's what it looked like the signal was. And we did have a star pass to Leslie Borden, but the jam ended, and it looks like there were no points scored on the jam. For the pummelers, that is. It, they were... Th it looks like four awarded to the Doomsdaisies at the end of that jam. So we're at 3 to 24 with 25 minutes remaining on the clock. Plenty of time. This game, it's anybody's game. Isn't that what they say? Oh, please don't. <laughs> don't say <that>. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. We'll say it all night long. <laughs> all righty, and we're back into the action. Wild E. Coyote back up for the Doomsdays. He's already taken a hard hit out and uh, recycled. And up for the USPS, it's Sunshine. Sunshine looking to make some headway, gets recycled as well and is sent to the back of the pack. Both jammers still struggling as we're already almost 30 seconds through. And all the way up to, and they're trying to make some offense happen for Wildy Coyote. Sunshine, meanwhile, makes her way out. USPS lead jammer. Wildy Coyote taken out, but it was an out of play hit. So Wildy Coyote able to keep going. And we're going to lose a blocker from the USPS to the penalty box. That's Tootsie Roller heading to the box on that out-of-play call. 
Jam comes to an end. Three points for USPS, making a little movement on their board. 624 Doomsdaisies with the lead currently. 2409 remaining on the clock. So USPS will start down one block or something they probably don't need right now. It may be a boon for Frack Attack, who has the flower on her head for the Doomsdaisies. The flower, as opposed to the star. We know what they mean. I can't see. There we go. It's it's Phantom Menace jamming for the USPS. She was down so low it was hard to see. Frack Attack once again just driving that wall, able to pull out lead jammer Doomsdaisies. Phantom Menace looking to maybe do a star pass, but she was able to get in uh, along the outside line. She's out and eligible to score. Frack Attack, meanwhile, coming back in for a scoring pass. Ooh, a nice little apex jump there, too, at the end. She calls it four points on the board for the Daisies, and the pummeling service still got five seconds, it looks like, on that uh, penalty for Tootsie Roller. So she's standing and uh, ready to go back in, but it's going to be a five seconds that Surrey may be able to take advantage of. Surrey Brawl jamming for the Dooms Daisies. That is the longest time when you start a jam in the box, your time does not expire, and you're standing at the start of the next jam. That, that, can, be a, that can be painful. I don't know how we lived with one-minute penalties back in the not-so-distant past day. <laughs> That's it. Devastator uh, jamming for USPS. She is lead jammer. But it looks like it's a foot race with Surrey Brawl not far behind. Absolutely. I mean, less than maybe five feet between them. Tater going to go ahead and call off the jam. No points for either jammer on that jam. Right. All Tater's blockers were in the back, so she didn't want Surrey to take advantage of that and score before she had a chance. That is that is wise ja jammer awareness. That is wise jammer awareness. And Wild E. Coyote returning to the jam line for the Dooms Daisies. And for the USPS, it's going to be Sunshine again. It looks like we have the Dooms Daisies at 28 and the Pummelers at 6. And we're back into the action. Wild E. Coyote coming through the wall, takes a spill, but is right back up and able to just leave the pack. So she's out. Daisy's once again with Lee Jammer. Wild E. Coyote, meanwhile, looking to break out of the pack. Bones Patrol, though, takes her down. She's back up and into the pack, but already coming through for five. It's Wild E. Coyote between the two leagues as well. Right, so it gives those players that might not necessarily be on Fight Club or Mile High Club, etc., to play against people from other leagues that they don't normally get to play against, so. Absolutely, and I know it's fun for the fans to be able to, sure. to see two leagues that we love here in Colorado. I mean, yeah. everybody knows both leagues, everybody loves both leagues, and it's good to see more interaction between the two, I think. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people Especially if they don't know somebody that plays roller derby and they're just a casual fan, maybe that, oh, they go and see a game because they work with somebody. They don't really understand, like, the home team concept, but it actually grew out of the need for a long time ago when there weren't that many roller derby leagues at all, when they had to have teams within a league to have games. So, it, so it's kind of a... A nod to the past, but yet looking toward the future as well. Absolutely. And, and, and home teams are still very important because it's a place for you to grow. Um, it's a way for when you, I mean, when you have a league that's got 40, 50 members and only 14 of them can be on a travel team, it's a way for everybody to get some skate time in too. Exactly. All right. It looks like we're getting back to the action here. In a few seconds. Frack attack jamming for the Dooms Daisies. Phantom Menace once again for USPS. Now Phantom Menace just driving right down the middle of the pack there. Yeah. Lead jammer for USPS. Frack attack up at the front of the pack. One to get by. That is... It's Misto. It is Misto holding her up. She finally breaks free, but Menace already back around for a scoring pass. Comes right through Untouched. on the inside. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was. Four more points on the board for the USPS. That's going to take them to 10 to 38. Doomsdaisy still with a pretty good lead right now, but still 20, 20 minutes in this half and a whole other half to go. Yeah, the USPS definitely needed that, that uh, round of points there. Now we're going to start a little further up at the pivot line. We've seen a lot more of this uh, happening in, in the recent couple seasons. Uh, it used to always be the case, and then it went away, and now it's coming back, I think. 
getting back into the action here. <laughs> We've got uh, Bones Patrol for the Doomsdaisies. First time jamming. Makes quick work of the pack there as they come around into turn two. Lead jammer. And we have and Devastator for USPS jamming. Breaking the pack. Eligible to score. Both teams now down one blocker as uh, Bones Patrol coming in. Calls off the jam, does manage to pick up two points. But no score for Devastator on that jam. And I apologize, that was three points for the Doomsdaisy. So 10-41, Doomsdaisy's really out there to keep that lead. It looks like we're going to start with one blocker in the box, and that looks like dopamine for USPS. So Daisies will have a one skater advantage. So Wild E. Coyote may be looking to take advantage of that. Jamming for the Dooms Daisies. Getting off the line quick. Sunshine jamming for USPS. Gets hung up by Betty Booyah at the backside of the pack there. Uh, gets taken to the outfield. And again, another hit to the infield. Not letting it phase her. Coyote, meanwhile, at the front of the pack, lead jammer. USPS looking to play some offense, but we have another star pass to Blue Shelly. Blue and Shelly she's off to the Yeah, race. Blue Shelly out there. And Wild E. Coyote out the front side of the pack, calls off the jam, four points on the board. So you mentioned the pivot line start coming back as of late. Also, the star pass has been making more of an appearance as of late as well. Um, again, I guess those two things, more tools in your toolbox to use against an opponent on the track, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. And everybody loves a good star pass. Of course. <laughs> you know, these things are like fashion. Wait long enough, it'll come back in style. Exactly. We Now, up on the line, we've got two sci-fi series against each other. Frack Attack versus Phantom Menace. So if you get the references, Phantom Menace is Star Wars, Frack Attack, Battlestar Galactica. And it looks like Star Wars wins this time. <laughs> Lead Jammer goes to Phantom Menace. And there again, Frack Attack takes the star off. She may or may not pass it. She's hoping nobody notices that she's the jammer is, and hopefully hoping to break it. But Misto holding her up there. Menace already threw for five as Frack just breaks the pack. Yeah, Misto calling out to Menace to possibly uh, tell her to drag Frack back into the pack, but Menace just decided to go and score some more points. Now Frack coming in, takes a hit from Pixie or Battles to the infield. Menace gets in, picks up one more point for USPS, and that hit from Pixie or Battles was good timing because no points were awarded to the Doomsdaisies because Frack Attack was taken to the infield. Correct. Can't score points if you are out of bounds. So who do we have lined up next here? It looks like we have Surrey Brawl for the Daisies and it's Devastator for USPS. And we're off. And Devastator on the inside line, stepping like almost just looked like she walked right down there. Lee Jammer going to the USPS. Surrey Brawl gets a cutting the track penalty. This is what the USPS wants right now is a power jam. Definitely. A nice hit by Tussie Roller on Surrey to drag her all the way back, all the way to the back. And she forced the cut penalty, sending her to the box for 30 seconds. Coco Rolla Diva trying to do the same as Tater came through the pack. Tater, though, just stayed up on her toe stops, picked up an easy five points. Pack waits for her just outside of turn number three. Oh, and here's a little tidbit of information. Uh, Devastator was named as one of Rocky Mountain's Skater of the Month this month. And it shows as she shines coming out of the pack another five points. And she's coming up to score again while Surrey's penalty expires and she's on her way back to the track. So you see the strategy change in the pack. Now the U.S. Pummeling Service stretching out the back there, looking to drag Surrey back as far as possible. Meanwhile, at the front, uh, Tater taken to the outfield, going to have to recycle. Surrey Brawl taking a big hit from Tootsie Roller, also going to have to recycle again. Mm -hmm. Bones Patrol trying to get in there and play some offense for Surrey on Nikki Bricks. Surrey Brawl just one to go. She's out, now eligible to score. Meanwhile, Tater really having some trouble at the back of the pack. She's going to go ahead and call off the jam. She did manage to pick up uh, five more points. So now the score stands at the Daisies 45, USPS 32. 
<laughs> Thank Sorry. you for standing up and getting that for us because I, I yes, couldn't do it. There was a referee helmet in my way. So taking the star for USPS for the first time is Love Hurts. And for the Daisies, we have Wildy Coyote. And Love Hurts on the inside, Wildy Coyote on the outside. It was almost neck and neck coming out of the pack. Lee Jammer goes to the USPS. And Love Hurts going to have to call it off because Wildy Coyote was just right there with her. Pretty much right there. Not even a skate length between them. 14 minutes remaining on the clock, still 32-45, and we're going to line them right back up. And once again, the matchup we've seen a couple of times already this evening, Frack Attack for the Doomsdaisies up against Phantom Menace for the USPS. Science fiction, science fiction. And it looks like the Daisies will start one blocker down giving Menace an advantage. And Phantom Menace is going to take advantage of it. Lee Jammer goes to the USPS. She made pretty quick work of that pack. While Frack is still stuck in the pack. Frack has removed her star, still holding on to it, takes the hit to the infield and gets recycled. Menace, meanwhile, comes through an easy five points on the board for USPS. Ooh, nice hit by tri Triple Shot Misto. Drawing a cut penalty on Frack Attack. Power jam for the USPS. Not what the Daisies want, but certainly what the P USPS wants right now. Indeed. Menace just tearing up the pack. Comes in to Fallen Angel. Gets held up. Fallen Angel driving her to the infield. Menace going to go ahead and recycle just to take the to make sure everything is good. And again, Fallen Angel with another heavy hit on Menace to the infield. They say football's a game of inches. I don't know. I think Derby is too because you have to be so aware of the track boundaries. Not, you know, when your foot goes out, this person, like, if you pass their hips, etc. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely correct. 15 points on the jam there for Menace. 47-45, second lead change of the evening. USPS now in the lead by just two points. And you got to love a game with not one, but multiple lead changes. It's always so much fun. Well, and unless you're playing in it. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. it's nerve-wracking. <laughs> it can definitely be nerve-wracking. Yes. So we're going to start with a power start for the USPS. Frack Attack is standing in the box. And we have Leslie Borden jamming for USPS. And Leslie Borden coming hard into the pack there. Uh, but Frack Attack out of the box and through the pack is going to be lead jammer. Leslie Borden gets recycled all the way back. Surrey Brawl doesn't want to let her get that helmet cover off, takes her to the outfield. Meanwhile, Frack Attack comes back in all the way through for five. She just found a nice inside lane and took it. And Leslie Borden really fighting on that front wall of uh, light blue aquamarine. <laughs> aquamarine, that's right. As Frack Attack comes through, gets, uh, gets uh, right through the pack for five more. Now the helmet cover has officially been passed to Sunshine. She's out of the pack and eligible to score. Frack Attack aware of it, comes in, going to pick up a few more points and call it off. Four more points for the Dooms Daisies. Puts the Dooms Daisies back in the lead. 47-59. 11 minutes in the half. Up, official timeout. I think we have another track tape issue. So something else coming up soon. Really awesome stuff. May 16th, right here at Rocky Mountain Roller Hockey. It's going to be the 5280 Fight Club taking on the Gotham girls from New York. I know I'm going to be here for that one. Oh, yes. The, the reigning WFTDA champions for the third year in a row. Fight Club's really reaching high this season so far. Last weekend, they traveled to Portland to take on the Rose City Rollers. So bring on the competition. I agree. Always fun to see the, the top-seeded teams come together 
and uh, and play in the in the regular season as opposed to having to wait to see them play in the in the in the pre postseason. Right. It'll be interesting to see uh, you know the squads that they field this early and to see if they've done any kind of tweak to their strategies over the winter break. So it'll be good. All right, we're back at it here. Um, let's see, who do we have lined up to jam? Wildy Coyote for the Doomsdaisies, taking on. That's Devastator for USPS. Devastator seems to be one of the go-to jammers tonight for the USPS for sure. Yes. Wildy Coyote out and lead jammer for the Doomsdaisies. Devastator really stuck at the front side of the pack there. Meanwhile, the Daisies lose one to the box, two to the box. And that's great for Tater. She's able to get out and uh, now eligible to score. Wildy Coyote in the pack for a scoring pass, not making it much headway there against the USPS defense. And she's forced to call it because Tater was getting, getting ready to score. However, that leaves the Daisies down two blockers to start the next jam because there wasn't much time to try to kill those penalties. And I know Blue Shelley, who's got the star for USPS, is going to be looking to take advantage of that. Absolutely. Payne DePiper Piper up for the Daisies with the with the flower on her. And Alex Terminator getting ready to come in for the Daisies, so they'll be. Up one up more one, blocker, yeah. but Blue Shelley's out and lead jammer. Meanwhile, Payne to Piper recycled way far back, still working to get through that pack. A little bit of a dust up there. It, well, Miso takes out Payne to Piper, and Payne to Piper takes out Blue Shelley. So Blue Shelley and Payne to Piper both had to restart the pass through the pack there. Everybody go clockwise. <laughs> Blue Shelly's still working on that initial scoring pass. She's all the way through now. Oh, but picking up a, tack tr bleh, a track cut means power jam for the Doomsday season. It also means this will be one of our first jams where we're going to go for the whole length of the jam. The whole two minutes. Definitely something you don't want to hear as a jammer. Yeah, I mean, you don't think too much of it sitting in the crowd. It's just no. two minutes, right? But when you actually get out there and try to do a full two minutes and you're being beat on and trying to race around the track, it can get it can get it can get hard. <laughs> Bones Patrol Definitely. now has a star for the Dooms Daisies. Blue Shelly, meanwhile, coming back from the from the penalty box. I don't think anybody saw her coming in, so she's got four points on the board for the USPS. Triple shot Miso hanging out of Miso with a nice uh, plow stop there to stop Bones Patrol and drag her back. Triple shot Misto definitely looking for MVP blocker this time. She has been very active for the USPS out there. It wouldn't uh, be the first the time she earned it. <laughs> Blue Shelley was coming in, took a hit to the outfield, going to recycle Bones Patrol back in for a scoring pass. Coming up against Titan I Am. And Tootsie Ooh. Roller gets taken to the outside just as the jam comes to an end. And we've got 65 to 54 in favor of the Daisies. 7.30 left on the period clock. It looks like we're going to start with a three-on-three -three jam. And Phantom Menace versus Frack Attack again with the with the stars. Frack Attack out there again for the Daisies. Seven minutes to go on our first period. And we're off. Ooh, nice offensive sweep by Coco to get Frack lead jammer. Very nice. Frack out and ready to go now. Whistles blowing in the pack there. I'm not seeing who's being called yet. Menace, though, has broken the front of the pack. There is about half-ish of the track between the two jammers, so Frack is going for it. Nice Apex jump. jump. Four points on the board for the Dooms Daisies. That's going to move them up to 72-54. So USPS will start down one blocker as we get ready to set up for a new jam. 
And it's going to be Devastator taking on Wild E. Coyote on the jam line. Another uh, matchup we've been seeing and we'll probably see for the rest of the game. And uh, the pack has decided to move all the way forward to the pivot line, give the jammers a little bit of space to work. And nice hit by Whiskey Ginger takes Wild E. Coyote out right there at the line. And Devastator really pushing on that wall of Aquamarine, but not making any headway. Wild E. Coyote, lead jammer. We were just almost crushed by the pack. Yeah, that looked like a blob coming our way. <laughs> Thank goodness for bumpers. Thank goodness for bumpers. Devastator out, eligible to score. Wild E. Coyote, good awareness there, calls off the jam just in time. Four more points going on the board. That was pretty close, just in time. Another short official timeout while we do some uh, track maintenance again. <laughs> I think there might be some money for a company that could come up with a certain kind of tape that can withstand being rolled over while being taped, you know, as it's taped over the rope. Without leaving residue. That's the big right. key. So yeah. all you inventors out there, Get in the lab. Already back into the action. Sunshine jamming for the USPS. Fallen Angel taking the star for the first time for the Doomsdaisies this bout. Fallen Angel being taken out by Tootsie Roller and <laughs> and Sunshine taken out by Bones Patrol. So it's going to be everybody skate backwards. Everybody skate clockwise. Sunshine able to get back on the track. Makes it out. Gets lead jammer. Bones Patrol sitting on her, but she's able to break her way out. And Fallen Angel still still stuck behind that wall of navy blue. Bones trying to play some offense for her, and she's out. Nice little spin there. Gets her out. Spin to win. Spin to win. Spin, to win. <laughs> spin it to win it. That's it. Sunshine back into the pack, uh, calling off the jam. Does pick up three points for the USPS. No points scored for the Daisies on that jam. That was that was intense. It was intense. We're seeing some changing up as we get toward the end of this period. Uh, we got Frack Attack back on the line for the Doomsdaisies, but we've got Pixie or Battles up for USPS. This will be her first time with the star tonight. Trying some different things, seeing what works for That's him. Right. That's not a bad right. idea. Daisy's starting down one blocker. And we're getting into it. Pixie or Battles kind of getting hung up there by Teach's of Peaches and Coco Rolla Diva gets recycled. Meanwhile, Frack really having some uh, resistance at the front side of the pack here. The Pixie as well getting some resistance from the Aquamarine crew. The Aquamarine crew. <laughs> 30 seconds into the jam before either jammer makes any headway. Frack attack out, lead jammer for the Dooms Daisies. And it's gonna be a cutting the track on Pixie or Battles. So it's now a power jam for the Doomsdaisies. This is not what the USPS wants right now. No, certainly not. But the Doomsdaisies are going to take advantage of this as much as they can to increase their lead before we get into the half. Right, and not only are USPS down the jammer, but they're also down one blocker. That's one less person to play defense out there. And, it, and it's going to help frack out. She's through for five. Making it look easy. Absolutely. Now the pack kind of lines up, waits for her there. It looked like her team was looking to maybe hold back one blocker. Coco Rolla Diva looking to do it. Frack gets recycled. Whiskey Ginger returning from the penalty box is going to go join and add a little bit more defense. But they're doing a pretty good job out there uh, bumping Frack one side to the other and then making her recycle. Yeah, they're definitely stopping the bleeding. Now Pixie or Battles returns. Jam comes to an end. Three more points earned by Frack Attack there. So 89-57, and we're down to 209 in the first half of this first game tonight. Don't forget, there's a whole other game coming up after this one. It's going to be the Hoods versus the Orange Crushers from DRD. And Shehu, who is on the mic with me, will be skating in that one. I will be skating in that one. So Are you I looking forward be, to that? Yes, I am. I will be vacating this chair and putting on my gear and taking the track. <laughs> It'll be a good game. Ooh, Menace making quick work of that start. Wild E. Coyote, though, not far behind her, uh, is going to make this, uh, what you called earlier, a foot race. A foot and race. really, I mean, it's no room between them. Oh, and Phantom Menace looking to take her to the infield, but 
She was able to recover real quick. Yeah. That's going to force Mendes to call off the jam. Jammers can actually engage each other anywhere on Nothing like a little jammer on jammer defense. So we're probably looking at maybe one or two more jams in the half, perhaps. It depends on, yeah, how quick things go. They've been, there have been some really quick jams. There have been some really longer jams right. this time. So, yeah, it's who knows. The clock keeps ticking, but we'll keep calling it as long as we got action going. Sunshine jamming for the USPS meets that wall of Aqua, blah, 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 Aqua Marine and is going to pick up a cut. Very nice job there by number one, two, two, three, Purdy Vicious, taking her out and getting that cut. Dooms Daisies with the lead, and that is that's Uber Else with the it is Uber flower. Else. I'd never seen her in the in the aquamarine in yellow, so <laughs> oh, no, always we, see her in the black and red. We have a cut track penalty on Alice, which will spring sunshine and send her back to the track. And it also means we're going to end up with a two minute jam. So the period clock is going to expire. But we'll play through this jam, and then, of course, we'll be going to halftime. Yes. Sunshine. Ooh, nice move on the outside to kind of hop over Alex Terminacci's hip. But she gets taken out by Peaches. But I think Peaches' foot went out of bounds because... Just a little bit. The outside pack ref called a no pass, no penalty. That worked out. She didn't have to go recycle. Now Uber Alice returning from the middle box makes it look easy getting through the pack there. Uh, is going to pick up four points. Sunshine still in the pack, hit, taking a hit from Fallen Angel to the infield as Uber Alice coming back in for another pass. Daisy's at a pack disadvantage here by two. The last line of defense. Now, both teams really turning on the defense. Both jammers hung up in the pack looking for a way through. That is triple shot Misto just hitting on Uber Alice there, getting some help from her team members. Sunshine all the way through for four. And Alice getting bumped to the infield and taken back. And again to the outfield and going to recycle. By Misto again. End of the jam. Five more points earned by Uber Alice on that last pass. And that brings us to halftime. 61-103. So the lead change, lead change, lead change. Dooms Daisy's coming up about 42 points separating the team. Not an insurmountable number of points. Not by any means, We've no. seen the USPS come back from about this much of a deficit earlier. Correct. Uh, so the second half will be interesting. They're going to go take a break, get their heads back in in the places they need to be, and then yep. we're going to come back and see what happens. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen at home, for joining us on ColoradoSports.tv. I'm Bangers and Smash. And I'm She Who Cannot Be Named. We'll be back in about... Tenish minutes. Tenish. Nine and a half minutes.
All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ColoradoSports.tv. I'm Bangers and Smash. And I am She Who Cannot Be Named. She Who Cannot Be Named. What an interesting first half. So we started off early, the USPS really coming out strong. Um, they got the first blood as far as points go. And then the Doomsdaisies really turned on the magic and crawled way out in front of them. Yes, they've really piled on the points there. But then USPS had a couple of jams that went their way. They got a little bit of momentum. But then at the very end, it sort of swung back in the Daisy's favor. And now we stand at 103 to 61, Daisies. It was, yeah, I mean, and we're just about to get back into the action. Um, lots of action out there uh, right now. If you had to call it, who would you say is your choice for MVP blocker? Lots of blocker action happening out there um, from either team. Ooh. That's a tough call. That is a tough call. I've seen some nice work from on the USPS side from Tootsie Roller, Triple Shot Misto. Um, and on, on the, the other Daisy side, Coco side. Rolla Diva, uh, Fallen Angel with some really good hits in the last half. It was... It, it's, it's hard. It, yeah, it would be a hard choice. I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> However, you have to keep in mind that the blockers that deliver the big hits, the big hits are great, but sometimes it's the little things that you don't that don't necessarily catch your eye that make the pack work effective like the communication and the nice plow stopping and the bracing your teammates things like that so there are a lot of things that make yeah i i, I get that too the especially when you're when you've got four people out there and they're working a great wall together, it takes all four of those people and good constant communication to make that work in your favor. Right. No man is an island in this sport. That's You're for absolutely sure. right. No woman is an island. Excuse me. Well, men too, as we were talking about at the half. Uh, amongst ourselves. Uh, amongst ourselves, yes. yeah, yeah. You people at home were not privy to that discussion. <laughs> but we thank you very so much. That's so provocative. We, we do thank you very much for joining us on ColoradoSports.tv. And if you scroll down the page, you should see that donate button there. If you wouldn't mind uh, clicking on it and giving a little bit for the broadcast, we would greatly appreciate your support right here at ColoradoSports.tv. And also, we should probably take this moment to give a shout-out to the referees, the NSOs, all the volunteers that make roller derby happen because without them we wouldn't have a game it takes an army it almost takes as many or more people volunteering than are skating in the game definitely to pull this off definitely already back into the action phantom menace with the star for the usps is out in lead frack attack also for the dooms daisies just making her way out a little more than half a track between them so menace has got a good opportunity to go for points here Menace. And she quickly got all four, called it off. Frack Attack really pushing to get some points there at the end, but she was unable to hit the pack and stay in before those whistles were blown. So we're going to sit at 103.65. So USPS coming back with their heads in the game, looking to take back that lead. And we can only guess what they talked about in the locker room, but we can hope that they made some adjustments and keep the game exciting. Absolutely. Wildy e. Coyote with the uh, flower for the Dooms Daisies. And that's Devastator for the USPS wearing the white helmet cover with blue star on it. And Devastator running out the front side of the pack, picks up lead, but then takes the hit from Uber Alice, and Uber Alice recycling her back as far as she can. Meanwhile, we have a cutting the track penalty on Wild E. Coyote, so power jam for the USPS. Another opportunity for USPS to close the scoring gap. And now this is where we've really seen the USPS be able to make that headway for himself. The Doomsdaisies have given up a few power jams, and it's, it's a great opportunity for the USPS to make a comeback. That's right. Tater coming around again to score and gets tripped up by Surrey Brawl's long legs. But she's right back up and fighting on that wall again. USPS hanging back a little, hoping that the Daisies will get pushed out of play. But Daisies really not uh, turning down the volume here. No, they are definitely beating up Tater out there. She's trying to make her way through. Entire penalty gone. Fallen Angel picks up a penalty, so we lose another Daisy to the trap uh, to the penalty box. 
And it looks like Surrey Brawl also going. So the Daisies now with just two left on the track means Tater's going to finally make her way through for five. She had a nice little uh, tiptoe around Uber Alice in the front there. Good job keeping her skates in bounds. And she's coming around to score again. Coyote now does have the helmet cover off, gets taken to the outside, and is going to recycle. She was really looking to hand that helmet cover off to Uber Alice, just couldn't quite get that far up. And Uber Alice has to be there to defend against Tater when she's coming in. Which she does very well by knocking her to the outside and to the floor. <clears throat> Jam comes to an end. Another four points for the USPS. 74-103. So, oh, I'm sorry. Nine total for the USPS on that one. Brings them ever closer to the Doomsdaisies. Doomsdaisies have not made any movement yet in this half. Of course, we're only uh, four minutes in. It looks like we have another classic pivot line start. Now the pack is really stretched out here. USPS starting at the back as far as they can, looking to slow things down. Sunshine jamming for the USPS gets hung up and knocked out by the by the entire wall practically. Pretty much. Meanwhile, Bones Patrol up in front against that wall of navy blue. Ooh. Bones Patrol breaking through though. Lead jammer Threading going to the, the doomsdays. <laughs> I love those really precise, like tiptoe around, like get in that little tiny spot movements. That that itty bitty teeny tiny space that they give you on the inside. Right. I'm just gonna fit my entire roller skate right here. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Already four points on the board for the Dooms Daisy, so they've started to make some movement. Bones Patrol coming back in for another scoring pass. Meanwhile, Sunshine really struggling at the back of the pack there against that three wall that has been put up. It looks like it's Betty Booya giving her some trouble. Already took her out once and back. Another five points go on the board for the Dooms Daisy as Bone, Bones Patrol breaks out of the front side of the pack there. Oh, Bones Patrol coming through the pack, takes a spill. She's going to keep going. That's 4-4 four, four for both jammers, and now there's even less space between the two of them, about 10 feet separating them right now. So I'm guessing that Menace is have, ha, keeping the jam going, having confidence in her blockers that they will stop Frack and hopefully get another scoring lap on her. Yeah, now uh, they've done a pretty decent job on this last scoring pass. Menace all the way around and through now for another five point pass this time frack is still hung up in the pack so it that was a good decision on menace's part definitely and look there's a second scoring pass happening for menace while frack is still stuck on that uh, other scoring pass there's another five points so menace is up two scoring passes to frack's one so again that was a smart decision Menace coming in, tries for the apex jump, goes down, uh, no points on the last pass for her, but 18 to eight, Menace able to pick up 10 additional points by not calling off the jam earlier. But calling it from the floor. But it was a nice jump. It was a nice she kinda jump. She kind of just slid out, real, real gentle-like. We'll call it a baseball slide, yeah. We'll call it a baseball slide. <laughs> Wildy Coyote coming up with a flower on her head for the Dooms Daisies. And it looks like that's, that is Devastator with the star for the Pummelers. And Tater up and then taken out but able to, oh, not able to come back on. She picks up a cutting the track penalty. Wildy Coyote lead jammer and a power jam for the Dooms Daisies. Wally Coyote getting bumped to the outside. The Pummelers dragging her back. Betty Booyah trying to keep Tootsie from joining her teammates. A little bit of offense happening from all four of the Dooms Daisies trying to get uh, Wildy Coyote out of the pack there. And meanwhile, the Daisies are trying to keep one, but and that's Blue Shelly. She escapes and can form the bridge to keep her teammates in play. 
Now it's just Whiskey Ginger and Tootsie Roller holding up Wildy e. Coyote. Devastator returning to the backside of the pack there, uh, looking she, to break through herself. And she has the jammer cover in her hand looking for her pivot, who's Blue Shelly, and she takes it and is off. Five points more for the Dooms Daisy as Wildy e. Coyote makes her way through. She's going to go in for some more points because she's got some room. She's going to call it. It may have been too late. No, it wasn't. Four more points on the board for the USPS. No points for the Dooms Daisies. And that brings us to 130 to 97 with about 20 minutes left on the clock and in the game. Another old school pivot start. And a full five on five. The classic setup. The only thing we need to see now is the pivot trying to draw the false start penalty with putting their toe on the line. And then we'll be back in time. Bones Patrol jamming for the Dooms Daisies makes her way right through the pack. Lead jammer goes to the Dooms Daisies. Love Hurts for the USPS, out and eligible to score. Bones Patrol already threw on a scoring pass. Going to call off the jam, pick up four more points for the Dooms Daisies. And meanwhile, we have two pummelers going to the box. So the Daisies will start with a four-on-two pack advantage. Again, not what the pummeling service wants no. right now. Being down, they really don't want to give up that potential advantage. I say potential advantage because two blockers can be just as effective as four. Uh, True. We'll have to see how it plays out. We've seen a lot of good stuff from Tootsie Roller and Titan in this bout. So maybe they can hold up Wildy e. Coyote who is jamming for the Daisies. Wildy e. Coyote though able to break her way out. Leslie Borden jamming for the USPS is stuck behind that solid wall of four though. He's trying to find an inside line, takes the outside. Meanwhile, Wildy Coyote's coming up to score. And with a little bit of an assist getting out of the pack, Leslie Borden now eligible to score. Wildy Coyote almost threw on a scoring pass, is hung up by Tootsie Roller. Out of play is called. She calls off the jam. But does get that last point. Barely getting her hips past Tootsie Roller's hips in the front of the pack. So you don't have to go past the blocker, you just, your hips have to pass theirs. It's all about the hips. All about the hips. Alrighty, we're gonna start with a stretched out pack again this time. So the Daisy's taking the pivot line, and then we've got the bridge from Triple Shot Misto, and then the pummeling service taking the back line. Oh, no, they're switching oh, it up, last it second. Up. Here we go. But changing it up like that last second, though, you do run the risk of not having all your blockers ready and in a position that they want to be in. And that may have been what happened there. Both jammers made easy work of the pack. It's right. a race. Phantom Menace versus Frack Attack. We've kind of said that so many times tonight. Right. <laughs> Menace coming in hard. Again, I think she's going to hope her blockers are going to hold up Men. Uh, I'm sorry, hold up Frack so that she can put score. But it looks like Frack gets out first for four. And four on the board for Menace. So we have a net gain, net sum jam, four to four. What would the right term be? I, I, I would call it just a, basically an even jam. Even, even Steven? Yeah, because nobody's up at the moment. Yeah. Now Menace is out and, and he calls off the jam. Four points on the board for the USPS and two more points for the Dooms Daisies. Frack able to pick up a couple more. Uh, so ultimately, USPS coming out with a two-point earn on that jam. The net gain. <laughs> That's the net gain, you're correct. All you mathematicians out there, all you st stock stock people. All you people who know. aren't roller derby announcers <laughs> that can do math. And like numbers. 105, 144, 1655 remaining on the clock. We get back into the action with a stretched out pack. Blue Shelly with the star for the US Pummeling Service and Payne to Piper for the Doomsdaisies. Blue Shelly recycled, Payne to Piper dragging out the front side of the pack there. And Neither she's jammer there at free. The top. Nope. She has one to beat, two to beat. And she gets lead jammer on that out of play call. So Doomsdaisies now with the only jammer eligible score as Blue Shelly 
takes off the star, passes it to Sunshine. Sunshine with it in her hand, looking to get around Coco Rolla Diva there, does, and is now eligible to score. Payne to Piper back in and going to call off the jam. Four points on the board for the Dooms Daisies. Let's get all those points. So we have 144 to 105 with the Daisies still in the lead. And we have Devastator taking the star for USPS and Wiley Coyote again for the Daisies. And we've seen this matchup so many times tonight and it's gone so many different ways. Yes. We'll have to just wait and see what happens when the whistle blows. Full pack for both teams and there's the whistle. Oh, Ooh, everybody hitting the deck. Yeah, that, that was looked painful. Nikki Briggs going to the penalty box and Titan I am too. So the pummelers are down two in the pack. Coyote though really hung up there by Leslie Borden and Triple Shot Misto finds her way through on the inside line. Lead Jammer goes to the Dooms Daisies. That, that took 30 seconds to establish Lead Jammer. That's a pretty long time. That is Tater finds her way to the front side of the pack as well. Lead, uh, not lead, but eligible to score. Coyote calls it off with three. I think I've only seen, well, maybe not only, but the one time I saw a jam go two minutes with no lead jammer, I wanted to die. And I wasn't even on the track. It just looks so brutal. It, it can be it can be really, really tough out there. And I want to say that the, the pack maybe went around the track, like around, cir circumnavigated the track maybe one and a half times in two minutes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that, that is no fun. And when you're fighting those tough, tough walls, you just got to keep driving. Right. In two minutes, like we mentioned earlier, doesn't sound like a long time, but it is. So we have another uh, official time, or actually we have a team timeout. That's the USPS. By, right, called by the USPS. I can, I guess, read from our little list of sponsors here. Partners. The new terminology, partners. Um, we have the Colorado Symphony, Illegal Pete's, and CrossFit Cali. A bunch of our girls just went and attended a class at CrossFit Cali. They're located in Cherry Creek, and they raved about it. I don't know if you are into CrossFit or know much about it, but it's tough. Uh, at the moment, I'm not doing much of anything. <laughs> right. But I do know about CrossFit, and yeah, CrossFit is great. It and, is great. Uh, some of the videos I've seen from that particular CrossFit outfit are, I see that people are pretty happy doing what they're doing too. I saw a video where a, gal, a girl was like walking on her hands and like she had her, she had her legs bent. It was weird. And it looked like that scene from the exorcist where the girl comes down the stairs. It was crazy. <laughs> so it looks like we're back at it here, lining up for a new jam. And uh, it looks like a whiskey ginger taking the star for the first time. Fallen Angel was a star for the Daisies. Is taken to the outside, trying to take the inside line. Or, I'm sorry, she's taken to the infield, had it recycled. Now she sneaks in around the outside. Tootsie Roller trying to stop her, but she's out. Lead jammer going to the Dooms Daisies. Whiskey Ginger coming up against Coco Rolla Diva at the front side of the pack, able to break past her. Eligible to score for the USPS. Uh, Fallen, Fallen Angel back in. Fighting and against kinda, that wall Navy. She's kind of hung up. She's going to call it off. Does pick up three points on the pass and holds the pummelers to zero. Sometimes when you're out there jamming and you get hung up at the pack, you don't, you don't realize, oh, hey, I scored on all these blockers. I could probably call it now. You just think, like, I want to get through. I want to get through the pack. I have to get through to get all these points. Yeah, uh, uh, that's true. When you're out there, you, you're just focused so much on, I got to get past everybody and out. Right. You don't think about, oh, I've already passed your hips. <laughs> right. It's more like the house is on fire. <laughs> Sunshine jamming for the pummelers. Surrey Brawl for the Doomsdaysies. Surrey Brawl taking two really big hits back to back. Stays on her feet out and lead jammer for the Doomsdaysies. Meanwhile, Sunshine is drawn all the way back by Alda. And 
Suri taking a bit of a knee there. Cutting the track on Sunshine makes it a power jam for the Doomsdaisies. The USPS really got to stop doing that. Right, definitely not what they need right now. Because the clock is winding down. It looks like we have 12.40 left on the clock. Surrey Brawl still fighting on this scoring pass to get through. Is going to be recycled. Triple shot Misto taking her back all the way. So they're stopping the bleeding, but they really need they really need to put together some uh just power not give up those here, right. just not give up those power jams. The entire penalty for Sunshine is over. So good job on the defenders there holding Surrey Brawl for that entire penalty. Surrey Brawl breaks her way out. Five points go on the board for the Doomsdaisies. Sunshine getting drawn all the way back by Payne to Piper, it looks like. There, Sunshine makes her way out, now eligible to score. So Surrey Brawl going to go ahead and call off the jam after picking up another four points on that pass. And that brings us to 159 to 105, or I'm sorry, 163 to 105 in favor of the Daisies. 11 and a half, to go. And a half roughly, left in the game. It's Tater and Coyote once again. A matchup we've seen over and over. Saying Tater makes me want Tater Tots. I know. If you're listening at home and you're nearby, go to Sana, give me some Tater Tots and bring them by. No. I'll love you forever, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the action. Uh, Wildy Coyote right off the line with a very nice toe stop around Tootsie Roller, but then take it out by Nikki Bricks. Tater, meanwhile, free and lean jammer for the USPS. Wildy Coyote removes the flower from her head, looking to pass it to Bones Patrol, the pivot, which is successful, and Bones breaking out, but she's got one more to beat. Oh, take it out by Triple Shot Misto. That was a beautiful hit by Triple Shot Misto, and then she and then she went to turn around and drag her back and, and had a spill, but everybody's back up and safe. Tater through for five. Bones Patrol now out and eligible to score, so we're probably not gonna see Tater put a whole lot more on the board, but she is going in for it. She's actually gonna call it off. She, she earned one point. Tater did. Tater, now I'm gonna be thinking about Tater Tots. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Sweet Tater Tots oh. are the best ones. Thanks Tater for making us talk right. about Tater Tots on the feed. I like my Tater Tots with some ketchup and put a little bit of hot sauce in the ketchup. That's delicious. <laughs> now we got everybody at home wanting Tater Tots too. <laughs> Thanks Tater. Alrighty, we're back into the action. It's Frack Attack and Phantom Menace, and this time Battlestar Galactica wins. Frack Attack out quick. Lead Jammer. Menace, though, finds her way out. About a quarter of a track between the two of them. It's stretching out. Frack Attack coming in hot on the outside line. Calls off the jam. She does go out of bounds. Was able to pick up two, though, before the jam came to an end. Was able to pick up two, and we're going to line it up again. Clock winding down to about nine and some change, and the Daisy's taking the pivot line. <laughs> and looks like we have Sunshine lined up to jam for USPS and Payne to Piper for the Daisies. Packed nice and stretched out. Sunshine up to the front first. Stuck by Surrey Brawl. Surrey trying to take her out, but she's not going to let it happen. Tootsie Roller trying to play some offense for her, but then joins the wall of Navy Blue in the front to defend against Piper. Sunshine drawn all the way back. Piper, meanwhile, really fighting at the front side of the pack. The pack is so stretched out right now. There we go. Payne to Piper with lead jammer for the Dooms Daisies. And Sun Sunshine just really struggling with the, uh, the, the hits there. Continuing to be recycled. Drawn back there by Teaches of Peaches. <clears throat> Payne DeBiber back in now, meeting two skaters to get by at the front of the pack there. Leslie Borden and Tootsie Roller both really, uh, really just beating her, but she's all the way through for five. Right, getting passed on that out of play call. <laughs> Now the helmet cover has been passed, and now Tootsie Roller is the jammer for the USPS, out and eligible to score. 
so as you would expect, Payne to Piper coming back in, calls off the jam, picks up three more points. Daisy's continuing to dominate in the points arena, uh, not giving up any room to the USPS. One. 11 to 173 with 740 remaining on the clock. Still some time. There is some time. It's still not insurmountable. Not insurmountable. But the Daisies are not giving up a whole lot to the USPS in no. this game. They're not making very many mistakes. And that's exactly what the USPS needs them to do right now. Right. Jamming this time we got Wild E. Coyote. For the Dooms Daisies, taking on Blue Shelly for the USPS. And Blue Shelly is stuck behind that wall of Aquamarine. Aquamarine. And Lee Jammer goes to the Jammer in Aquamarine, Wildy Coyote. Blue Shelly recycled once again, really looking for a way through. The pack at a virtual standstill. Now, Blue Shelly hands the star right off to Titan I Am, who was in a great place because she was in front. Nobody was paying attention to her. She's able to break out quickly, at least stop the bleeding. Stop the bleeding. Slow the bleeding. Daisy's picking up another four points, increasing their lead that much more. There's six and a half to go. It looks like we have a timeout. It may be an official review. Uh, well, I see all the coaches out in the middle, so I believe that's what it is. If we find some information out about it, we'll let you know. Someone is missing from that little huddle. They are signaling to that person to come out and join them. So every third Friday of the month at Exto is a roller disco party, and they have a theme, which is always fun. Uh, the one for April is on April 17th. And I guess the theme is roll. I don't, I'm not sure how to say it. Like it's like Monopoly, so roll up. Rollopoly. Yeah. At first, I thought it said Roly Poly, and I'm like, well, I think <laughs> I think that's because I wrote it and misspelled it. <laughs> Rollopoly. So dress as Mr. Moneybags, put on your skates, and grab a sippy cup. Or you could dress as Baltic Avenue. I don't know. Interesting choice. Right. I would I would have picked Park Place, but. Well, you know, <laughs> keeping it real, right? Sure, you're right. Uh, what? Actually, you should dress as the shoe <laughs> with four wheels, and you'll be a roller skate. I always wanted to be the little, I, like the little play pieces. I always wanted the little dog. The Scotty is pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember maybe about a year or so ago that Monopoly announced that they were discontinuing one of the pieces, and I think it was the iron, and like people were in an uproar. I mean, people over an iron. They get. Or, like, yeah, they get people have to have their pet issue, I suppose, right? Anyway, I guess so. You could also dress as Chance or Community Chest, although those are, those are both very suggestive costumes. I don't think I could pull off the Community Chest, to be <laughs> honest. Sorry, <laughs> that would be a stretch. I wasn't taking it that direction, but but thank you for taking. I guess us I went there, so I <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> We are still in an official timeout, so let's tell you about the uh, couple more of the partners for partners. the Rocky Mountain Roller Girls. We've got Blush and Blue. Dave Wood Photography. Derbyville. Donegan Artworks. Five on Five Magazine. Now, i got to tell you about the title of this magazine if you're not a Derby aficionado. That was the word I was looking for. Five on five because when you have a jam, there are four blockers from each team and a jammer, and that's five. Well, that's true usually at the beginning of the game, at but the with penalties, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> exactly. Maybe so. maybe they could do it like a like an insert supplement. Well, this is the four on three part. Uh, there you of, go. You know? <laughs> this is the four on three part of the magazine. Um, the magazine is produced locally. It is by it one is. of our Rocky Mountain Roller Girls. It is produced by a Salt and Peppa of the Rocky Mountain Roller Girls. And it it is all about WFTDA Roller Derby. Correct. And you should definitely check it out. If you don't have a subscription, shame on you. Get one. Yes, definitely. I have a stack of them at my house. I read them regularly. Other sponsors we have are GTO Physical Therapy. One of my favorite places to go and eat, Hamburger Mary's. They have the best turkey burger. They do, and they have yep. the best servers, too. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, there's the, service is, the service goes without saying. It's phenomenal. It's, you can't argue with it. Hello, promo. 
Orthopedic Associates, PBR, Pabst Blue Ribbon, Sailor Jerry Spiced Rum, Skate Inc. Oh, Some skate, awesome work. Skate Inc. I think I know that guy. I think I know that guy too. Oh boy. And Slalom Consulting. And if you're interested, in, if you're out there and you have a business and you're interested in developing a partnership with Rocky Mountain Roller Girls, you can send an email to sponsorship at rockymountainrollergirls.com. Alrighty, and we're back into the action now. Frack Attack versus Devastator. Frack devastating. Attack at the front of the pack. Makes it around Tootsie Roller for lead jammer for the Daisies. So USPS looking to play some O for Tater. And That's yes. offense to you folks at home. And ag again, Frack Attack back through. Makes it look easy on the inside line. Five points. Five. Meanwhile, Tater, though, taking an inside line and... Completing her initial pass. Frack coming in, takes a hit to the infield. No points, but she's going to call off the jam. She called it grease style. Grease style, Grease yes. lightning style. Uh, from the floor. I imagine she was singing the song while she was doing it, too. Go grease lightning, you're burning up the quarter mile. So 182 to 111. Daisy's on top with about five minutes and some change on the clock. Phantom Menace for the U.S. Pummeling Service, taking on Wild E. Coyote for the Dooms Daisies. There's the whistle. Menace pops up from wherever she was hidden down there and breaks her way right down the middle of the wall. Wild E. Coyote removing the flower from her helmet. Passing she has it passed it to Surrey Brawl. Who gets reabsorbed and by... M Menace through for five. Surrey Brawl now out, hoping Menace hasn't seen that she's got the star. Menace is pretty smart, though. I and think she's aware she, of what's going she on. She is. And Menace Ooh. coming through, walking along the outside line. She's going to go on and keep on going, trusting those blockers again. It paid off for her earlier this evening. It sure did. I think she's hoping it'll happen again. She does have plenty of time to score some points. But it looks like she's going to pick up a back block penalty. I don't think that's what she wanted to happen here. No. Surrey Brawl already threw for four. Coming back into the pack is going to pick up a back block. So it's going to be a really short penalty for Menace. But it is going to mean we're going to go for the full two minutes. Resulting in a two-minute jam, yes. So Menace coming back from the penalty box. The pack is waiting for her. Uh, in the straightaway, almost into turn number three. And turn on the defense. <laughs> turn on the defense. But don't forget about offense for your jammer uh, if she's in the pack. It's absolutely necessary. I agree. Surrey Brawl coming back in makes quick work of that pack. Another four points on the board for Surrey and another four for Menace. Menace still up just a few points there. Um, on the on the jam. She's got about one scoring pass ahead of her, or ahead of Surrey, rather. Excuse me. Menace coming in, was taken to the outfield by Wild E. Coyote and now being recycled way back. Jam time expires. Looks like three, three on the last, so a little bit of, a little bit of game for the USPS on that jam. 193 Daisies, 127 USPS. We got about maybe three minutes left. Three minutes, three or three jams, perhaps. Unless what happened just now happens again, and then maybe two. True. Fallen Angel for the Dooms Daisies on the inside line, out and lead jammer. Blue Shelly also working her way through with the star for the USPS is taking a beating from the Dooms Daisies. Uber Alice is able to recycle her back. Meanwhile, Fallen's scoring. Blue Shelly does break the pack, completes her initial pass, and is eligible to score. Fallen Angel out through the front side of the pack. She's going to go ahead and call off the jam after picking up another four points for the Dooms Daisies. So we're going to line it up again. Both teams at full strength. 
Both teams looking like they're trying to figure out what jam start formation they want to employ. That's it. Where they want to be for this particular jam. We all want to be together. And we like each other. It's Tater versus Frack. And Tater first out. Lead jammer, USPS. Frack about 10 feet in closing. Tater really going for it. Both jammers coming in hot. <laughs> two two oh, two on the two. jam. Two two. A draw. That's the word I was trying to think of A earlier. Draw. You're right. A yeah. draw. Good lord. I couldn't think of that. A draw. But here I am saying like net gain. And oh my, oh my. Perhaps you should become an accountant. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, because I'm really good with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we get back into the action. A pivot start for the pack. Phantom Menace jamming for the USPS makes quick work of that pack and out lead. Wild E. Coyote jamming for the Doomsdaysies. Takes off the helmet cover, considers it, but is able to get out on the inside line. So now chasing down Menace. Let's see how this plays out here. Menace coming in. Up against Bones Patrol at the front of the pack there. It looks like she's going to keep on going as Wildy e. Coyote comes into the pack. Again, that trusting your blockers. It, it's worked for her once. It didn't pay off so well the second time. Right. But that may have been a smart call this time because Coyote did take a little Coyote spill there, the slowing her progress. That's it. So Menace coming back around for another scoring pass. Bones Patrol and Surrey Brawl looking to take her out, but she makes it uh, look easy. Four more points on the board. Indeed. And Wildy e. Coyote back in, taken out by Nikki Bricks, and going to be recycled. And Menace comes in. Uber Alice able to take her to the outfield. She's going to call off the jam. So that time it did result in a net gain for Menace. And she did get the, all those four, four points on that last pass, even though she was bumped to the outside. And we have an unofficial final. Yeah, we're here at 141-204. We're going to wait to hear the, the official results, but I think I'm going to go ahead and say this one's probably going to the Dooms Daisies. Probably. I, I don't see a 60-point error on the on the points. I don't, I don't see that either. I got to say, though, both teams really bringing it, and coming back into the second half, USPS seemed to be bringing it. They held the Daisies for the first three jams. Mm -hmm. They were lead. They were making points. No points for the Daisies, no movement. And then the Daisies found their second win and just didn't give anything up for the USPS. They piled, they piled on the points just enough to keep it comfortable for them. They did. And here we go. The, the Dooms Daisies taking their victory lap. Such a good game. So don't forget, ladies and gentlemen at home, we're going to go on a break for a little bit here. Let the two teams coming up uh, warm up. Up next, we've got the Rocky Mountain Roller Girls Red Riding Hoods, of which you'll see she who, who's been speaking with me all night, yes. playing as a jammer, I'm assuming. Probably a little bit a of little both. both. A little blocking I, and jamming. And uh, they're going to be facing off against the Denver Roller Derby Orange Crushers. So interleague home team bout coming up next. Exciting. Be sure to stick around. All right. I'm Bangers and Smash. I'm She Who Cannot Be Named. Thanks for joining us on ColoradoSports.tv. We'll be back in just a little bit with the second game of the evening.
Zero Bad Data. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ColoradoSports.tv. Uh, we're about to start the second game of the evening. It's going to be Denver Roller Derby's Orange Crushers versus the Rocky Mountain Roller Girls Red Riding Hoods. I'm Bangers and Smash, and I'm joined this time by... Phantom Menace. Welcome. Thank I imagine you. you're pretty tired after that last bout. Yep. I sure am. <laughs> All right. Well, let me tell you who's skating for the Orange Crushers from Denver Roller Derby. We've got number zero, Bad Data. Number 11, She Be Dangerous. Number 20, Midge Mayhem. Number 216, Sonic Death Monkey. Number 26, Tawanda Piece of This. Number 27, Pootie Tang. Number 277, Her Majesty. Number 37, Whizbang Weasley. Number 711, Ova Achieva. Number 831, S.H. Long. Number 91, Nora. Number 99, Disco. Your captains for the Orange Crushers. Number 222, Karen, your ass up. And number 768, Supersonic. Their bench managers, Double J, Seamus, and Blazer. That's the Denver Roller Derby Orange Crushers. We'll let the house finish announcing them and get the Red Riding Hoods on the track, and then we'll let Phantom Menace uh, tell you who's skating for the Red Riding Hoods. I do have a very exciting announcement about the Red Riding Hoods for this evening. And I already know, but I won't spoil it. <laughs> we are joined this evening for the first time by all three of the Serial Sisters on the Red Riding Hoods. I'll introduce them shortly. Here they are, all of them. We have 1SVG, Honey Bunches of Chokes, Serial Sister number one. 1101, Blue Scream of Death. 147, Havoc. 187, Ghetto Kitty. 22, Captain Crunch. That would be another Serial Sister. 42, Shell of a Subdrop. 44, Shredder Wheats. That would be the third Serial Sister. In case you guys we're can't count. We're getting lots of fiber tonight. I don't know what that... Oh, yeah, fiber. I thought you were talking about, like, announcing and, like, bandwidth or something. Yes, fiber, because uh, they're cereal. All right, 617, Harper Bazaar. 726, Major Lil Payne. 86, Assault and Peppa. 88, She Who Cannot Be Named. Number 9, Crucial Taunt. Captain this evening is Mistress Terrible, and the Red Riding Hoods are coached by Pippi Skullknocking and Raven Lunachick. Nine. Oh, and they have their lovely uh, mascot. Vocabulary's hard. Uh, Gator Dunn Gator over there. Dunn with the cape on, yes. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but she's there. Alrighty, I see the refs taking the track. That means we're going to get started any moment now. The halftime clock's got about 25 seconds left on it. The team's getting all set up. The Red Riding Hood's uh, getting their, their hoodies off. <laughs> You know, I always wondered about the man in black. Shouldn't it be the man in black and white? You would think, yeah. Uh, I see both colors. I, on I do as well. <laughs> we'll ask him about that later. All right, jamming for the Red Riding Hoods, we've got Shredder Wheats. And up for the Orange Crushers, we've got Midge Mayhem. So we've got the Red Riding Hoods in uh, red and the Orange yes. Crushers in white. white. So that you can tell the difference. Uh, oh. They're not skating in their normal orange thoughtful. tonight. Thoughtful. That was thoughtful, unlike, uh, you know, the blue and black last time. Mitch Ham Mayhem getting hit out of bounds by uh, She Who Cannot Be Named. And Shredder Wheats at the front facing off against uh, Disco. One to beat Sonic Death Monkey. She's out, and Lee Jammer goes to the hoods. Two very difficult things are happening right now. Uh, well, they're over now, but... Disco is really good at roller derby, so that was probably hard about a minute ago. Anyway, Shredder's scoring some points now. That's and, exciting. And she's going to have to be aware she is. She calls it off before Midge Mayhem can hit the back of the pack. And let's see what our points totals are. Two points <laughs> for, or sorry, three points for the Red Riding Hoods. Mm. Uh, although they're putting oh, them on wow. the wrong side of the board there. There we go. Three points for the Red Riding Hoods, zero for the Crushers. First blood to the Red Riding Hoods. This time we have another pivot line start. Uh, Havoc jamming for the hoods. Taking on Ova Achieva for the Crushers. Is pivot she? line start, so they are both getting a little bit of momentum before they hit the pack. Is Ova Achieva a, a transfer? Uh, no, she's Havoc been with Denver for a while. Okay. Havoc out, lead jammer. 
Ova Achiva still stuck behind the wall of red. A salt and Peppa and she who could not be named really leaning on her there. Havoc on a scoring pass. Now Oba Chiba's the out. The Crusher's getting back two blockers from the penalty box. Havoc calls the jam. And Should that's going to be 4-0. Ooh, a little sexy slide there at the end. <laughs> hey. Red Riding Hood's pulling out 7-0 to zero right now. 28 remaining on the clock. Pootie Tang with the star for the Orange Crushers. Honey Bunches of Chokes jamming for the Hoods. Full pack right now. There's the whistle. And Pootie Tang quickly to the front there, but getting held up by Major Little Pain and Mistress Terrible, and then taken out by Crouton and Major Little Pain. Meanwhile, Honey Bunches of Chokes kind of stuck behind a solid wall of four, looking for some Pootie help. Pootie Tang lead. And now Honey Bunches of Chokes taking off the star, passing it to Major Little Pain. And Major Ooh. Little Pain finds her way out the front side of that pack. A little one leg 180 there, making it look easy. Pootie Tang out, going to call off the jam, and that's going to be all four for the Orange Crushers. Still a lead for the Red Riding Hoods, 4-3 as that jam comes to an end. Uh, yes. Game score is 7-4, to four, Hoods. Harper Bazaar jamming against uh, Midge Mayhem. Number, hi -o. Well, not anymore. With no, the new really number she rule, changed. she's Chad. She's gone ahead and changed it to 20, but oh. we'll still give her the shout out of hi -o. <laughs> You can still call me R2-D2 if you want to. I, I did, as a matter Good. of fact, in the last bout. I knew I liked so, you. you know. uh, <laughs> so as we get started here, Midge Mayhem driving against Salt, uh, salt and Peppa and finds her way out of the front oh, pack. Oh, no, look. She's hi tonight. Is she hi tonight? She's hi right, Nice. Shredder as the star, as the pivot, which means, uh, oh, no, she dropped it. She is, uh-oh. Shutter is down and holding her face. She's back up, though, and picking up the helmet cover. She's going to go ahead and put it on. She's a tough cookie. Five points on the board for the Crusher, so we got our first lead change of this game. Yeah, there she is getting by Disco yet again. That's a tough person to get by. Too, yeah, I tell you that. captain of Team USA, so. Midge Mayhem coming through, going to call off the jam. Four more points on the board for the Orange Crushers. We have a lead change, so everybody take a shot. That's right. If you're at home, you don't have to drive home. Therefore, you should be taking a shot, not a drink. 13 to 7 in favor of the Hoods. All righty. So this time lined up, we've got she -Hu for the Hoods taking on Ova Achiba for the Crushers. <clears throat> She who's a relatively new skater for the Rocky Mountain. <laughs> oh, wait, just new. kidding. She's been with the RMRG and the Hood since the very beginning. Forever but don't and tell her ever. I said that. <laughs> Are you saying she's old? No, <laughs> you did. I never said that. She who Oba is Chiba. one of my most favorite <laughs> skaters ever. Oba, Oba Chiba with lead. lead. She, she who removed the panty. It looks like we've had a successful star pass to Havoc, who then got hit out of bounds and taken all the way back by another one of my favorite skaters, Suze, who's you can, amazing. You could say Schlong. You can. S-H Long. I call her Suze. <laughs> the terrible Suze. I will say that's an amazing, uh, you know, and that's her real name, so I don't really know how that worked out, but it did. So Ova Chiba coming through, picks up five points, calls off the jam, puts the Crushers at 18, the hood still standing at seven, 24-35 remaining on the bout. Blue or Scream of Death half. jamming. Did yes, in the half. Blue Scream of Death jamming. She has recently returned to roller derby from a hiatus. Uh, I can't see who's jamming for the Crushers. I think it's Pootie. Is it Pootie? Yes. It is Pootie. <laughs> I saw her head pop up there and yeah. I recognize the face. So. We get into it, and the Hood's really turning on the defense at the front side of the pack there. Pootie Tang taken down, back up, and then just finding that wall again. Scream around the outside. Ooh. Dang, almost out, but recycled by Disco. Oh, but up the inside, and she scored lead there. Pootie Tang not far behind her. It's going to be a foot race, about 20 feet separating the two. Well, Pootie's about a foot taller than Scream 2, so. Oh, a little apex hop there. 
And Blue Screen of Death picks up four points and keeps the Crushers to zero. So the Hood's coming closer to the Crushers' current lead, 11 to 18. Get your next shot ready, people. And it's Hayo yes, Mitch it is. Mayhem on the jam line for the Crushers. Versus Major Lil Payne. Can we, can we call her number? Ouch! <laughs> it's not really. Oh, ouch. I get it. I get it. Yeah, give her, her a, yeah. Major, Major Lil Payne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I usually call her LP, but LP. Yeah. You know. Oh, 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 God! That is that is some like battle. Mids around the outside. LP stuck on Nora. And who's this girl in the blue helmet, number zero? That is bad, bad data. data. She yes. new? She is relatively new to Denver okay. Roller Derby and uh, showing she's got what it takes to play this game, yeah. that's for sure. Uh, LP with the start off. Midge Mayhem through for five. Uh, and she who has the star and is being really held up there in the pack. Oh, not anymore. She sneaks by Nora there on the inside. Midge able to get through for another five points, and and now it looks like she's gonna go in for some more points. She's she knows where she who is. No, she doesn't. Yeah, she does. Midge is pretty good at her jammer awareness. Yeah, I think so. I know. <laughs> Midge is awesome. Did you know that Midge Mayhem is sponsored by S1 Helmets? I did not or know something? that. But that's really awesome. She was in this commercial. It was pretty exciting. So, yeah, if you're watching at home, she's pretty awesome. Oh, look, two serial sisters. Oh, my God, all three serial sisters all on the pivot line sisters right in front. out there right now. <laughs> Along and with then, Captain. Well, Captain's out there, but the Captain, uh, Mistress Terrible, is on the line as well with the serial sisters. We've got a bowl of all kinds of Kellogg's. That's it. Or and, something. And they're not providing much fiber to overachieve a... Oh! They, they are really blocking oh, her up oh, right now. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Meanwhile, we've got Havoc jamming for the hoods, fighting at the front Fiber. of the back against KY there. Ova Chiba finds her way out of that cereal bowl she lead jammer to the out. crushers. The fiber was digested. There's something. <laughs> oh, man, I wish this was the T-U-R-D game again. <laughs> T-U-R-D. <laughs> with, with the fiber <laughs> sisters. Ova Chiva coming into the pack, squeezing right through. Pretty easy there. Oh, he did it Five again. Points. Havoc and Disco, but they seem to be, uh, they're smiling. They're smiling at each other while they're beating on each other. I probably would have been crying on the inside, but, you <laughs> Just know. Just a little bit. Havoc's oh. kind of a badass. Ova Chiva oh, man, penetrates that was the middle of the pack and picks, calls off the jam. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she she eventually slid through. <laughs> so we've got the Crushers increasing their lead. 11.37, 20 and a half-ish minutes remaining on the clock. She who cannot be named on the jam line for the Hoods. <clears throat> Up against Pooty Tang. Yes. For the Crushers. Yes. <laughs> And we're off. Uh, we haven't had a whole lot of penalties yet in this game, No, we? we are seeing full packs a lot here. Have we had any penalties? We have had some okay. penalties early on, but things got cleaned up, and it seems like it's going to stay that way Probably for now. Probably with the fiber, they got cleaned up. And that's it, yeah, yeah, cleaned out. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, we got lead jammer, Pooty. <laughs> and Pooty Tang tearing up the track, burning to get some points on the board. Crushing it. She who has removed the star, she is past the star. Uh, oh, but she's stuck maybe on Weasley. Not. Oh, I can't. Oh, no, that I can't was tell pivot. if the star is actually there. I now the star has been passed. Nora P. Nefren really doing a good job holding up the pivot. Who is Ooh, that? Oh, boom. That looks like uh, Chokes. No. Har Harper? Harper Bazaar. That is Harper Bazaar. Um, I have yes. to say, Nora transferred last year, yes, and she yes. she was she's always been really good, but um, she's really improving pretty steadily this season. Oh my goodness! Now it, that call off was that. amazing. Pooty Tang came in, she fell, she called it off, and Harper Bazaar coming in jumped into <laughs> Crouton. Oh man! Not on purpose. Uh, Crouton was down. Yeah. She was looking to pick up those points. She yeah. don't want to quit till that fourth whistle. Right, right. And uh, and then there was a little bit of concern that maybe there was a foot in the face or something, but it looks like everything's good. So, <laughs> Midge Mayhem up to jam again for the Crushers, taking on Shredder Wheats. Thank you, because I lost who was just You're as, good. as the pack started there. Oh, oh my God! All three serial sisters again. Again. 
Lead jam to Midge Mayhem. Uh, Shredder Wheat's taken out by S.H. Long. and the fiber uh, is on her side. <laughs> but she breaks her way through and is now eligible to score. Midge Mayhem through for points, calls off the jam. Four more on the board for the Orange Crushers. I hope I hope you people are enjoying the fiber jokes because they're not we gonna are, stop. <laughs> and they're not going to stop. All right, 45 to 11 for the Orange Crushers. We've seen a lot of pivot line starts. We have. In it's this game it's as something well. we're seeing a lot more this. You know in the what? Last I know, I've noticed that as well. Or so. mm -hmm. um, I think mm -hmm. it's it's a good strategy point. It gives the jammers a, an ability to get a little bit of a head start. It yes. <clears throat> so we got Jam and Supersonic for the Orange Crushers for the first time the, this evening, taking on She Who Cannot Be Named for the Hoods. Yeah, Supersonic, making it look easy up at the front. And she's through. Lead jammer to the Orange Crushers once again. She who has the star oh, off. Boom. Oh, dang. N looking to get around Nora. Yep. Nora takes her to the infield, though. Yep. She's going to recycle. Yeah, Nora's footwork is looking really so really solid this season. Supersonic through for five, making it look easy. And she who still has the star, but she's hung up there at the back of the pack. I think she's going to be looking to pass it. And she does. Yep, honey bunches of chokes. We've seen a lot of star passes by the Hoods this evening. Do you know what the uh, lead differential is right now? Uh, I believe that the Orange Crushers have taken the lead the last five jams, and the Hoods have kind of dropped off. They were early on yes. really getting those leads. Yep. Um, they really need to turn that back on for themselves, I think. Yeah, so I, I wonder if that's indicative of the, uh, of the star passes. Um, you know, why we're seeing more with the hoods. It, it makes sense. Yeah. If, you, if you're having trouble getting through, th that's what your pivot's there for. So we've got a team timeout for the uh, for the hoods. And I think it's it's a well-placed timeout. If I were them, I'd be calling one right now as well. Just, just because of what Bangers and Smash just said, um, that the Crushers have had lead a number of times in a row recently, and the hoods really have to get their game back together to where they were those first couple of jams. That's it, an opportunity to get together, talk about what's going on out there, and, and get back, get their heads back in the game, not let this crusher dominance get into their heads yeah. and, uh, Don't and be foul crushed. things up. Yeah, exactly. Use the fiber. That's it, use the fiber. Or the uh, fairy fairy tales. Use the force of the fiber, Luke. Use the force, no, no. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> well, probably not. Interesting fact for you. Last night I watched the movie that is your namesake. And yeah, I have to tell you, you you're a hundred million times better than Thanks. that movie. It's the weirdest thing. So I have this like tradition where I watch it on game day. So one game day I was like bored, you know, and I was like, what should I do? And I was like, oh, I'll watch Phantom Menace. It was my husband's idea. So I watched it and then I played really well. So you know what I have to do every time I have a game now? You have to suffer through Jar Jar Binks. It's the worst thing ever. <laughs> Alrighty, um, back into the action on the track. <laughs> We've got... Blue uh. Scream of Death and Pootie Tang. Bam! Shredder Wheat. Very wow. nice hit taking Pootie Tang to the outfield. Both jammers recycled early Ooh. in the jam. And now Pootie Tang, one to beat, is out lead jammer for the Crushers. Yep. Scream stuck there on the Terrible Sue's SH Long. She's a killer blocker. She is. She's uh. like a wall in and of herself sometimes. Yeah, she's like to the force of two people. <laughs> two walls all by herself? Pretty much. <laughs> Alrighty, five points already earned by Pootie Tang. She's back into the pack again. Mm. Oh, and comes in hot, takes a spill. Scream getting knocked around. It looks like she's still got the star in her hand. She oh, does, oh, but oh, she's really... Oh, oh, and a nice pass there. Very nice Through the nice middle pass. to Shredder Wheats. Probably... Oh, oh, it's a pivot pass. It's all right. It's she okay. can drop the pivot hat. I won't... But we'll have to get it cleared off before we can do the next jam, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. She, she knows it's gone, so she's it's going to pick thing, it up. It's a good thing because it doesn't seem like the NSOs or officials have uh, identified the fallen stripe. <laughs> All righty, so we got Midge Mayhem tucked way down in there somewhere for the crushers, and I cannot see who is jamming. I don't for think there are any jammers. Wait, wait. There it is. looks like Midge Mayhem. Yeah, Midge Mayhem is there. Which you said, and, and, and Chokes. Oh, and Chokes Ooh, for almost up the inside there. And Chokes comes into Disco, and Midge Mayhem yeah. 
makes her way out of the front side of the pack there. She sure did. Great song. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm sure they can hear at least some of it. Anyway. Yeah. Midge Mayhem threw for five as uh, Chokes really having a time. Uh, Disco at the back of the pack there just really laying on her. Able to pass the helmet cover, though. Ooh, and a little hot by Hooter. That is that is She Who with she the star She Who now. has been a force in roller derby for the past few years. And she just has the most incredible stamina and the most incredible footwork. She's got these little hops, little hop skipping a jump through the middle, up the side. She's just... She's one of my inspirations. As one is, of my favorites. Yeah, as is Midge Mayhem, actually. All right. Uh, Harper, perhaps, for the Hoods, and Ova Achiva. And uh, again, we're still with a full pack. There was the whistle. Yeah. Nobody moved. So sometimes you just got to yeah. look at the situation and determine oh, what you're going to do. Oh, Harper around the outside. That's the Hood's first lead in a while, yeah? That is the first lead for the oh, Hood's Oh, boom! Did you guys see that cams. hit by uh, Nora, Nora on uh, Crouton? Man, Crouton is one tough cookie. She just hops right back up like... Jeez. Yeah. Ova Chiva out. And Harper back through right past Nora P. Nefren yeah, calls off the jam. And we've got some movement now for the Hoods. This is, I think, that is going to help bolster them to come back, take some leads. Let's hope so because uh, our people have their shots ready. They've I know. Been waiting. I know. So, if you want to do a shot, you can still no, do one. No. 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 But you can drink, right? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and drink. Hold on to that shot. Wait. Wait on the shot. It's not time yet. We'll let you know. Alrighty, so we got Pootie Tang on the line for the Orange Crushers. If you, if you want to pour a different shot and drink that, that's okay. All right. That's Sorry. what I was trying to clarify. Uh, Shredder Wheats and Pootie Tang. Shredder Wheats oh. uh, took a little spill from one of her team members, but she's back up. That kind of gave an advantage to Pootie Tang. She was able to get out and grab that lead. Yeah. Both jammers out. Pootie Tang coming in hot to the pack, looking for points before she calls off the jam. Ooh. Taken to the infield by Assault and Peppa, calls off oh, the jam. Yeah, Peppa. Five on Five Magazine, anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Speaking of which, shout out to our sponsor, Five on Five Magazine, uh, which may or may not have something to do with Salt and Peppa. I'm not sure. Um, I think she has some hand in that whole thing. She owns it. <laughs> Um, I feel like there's other sponsors we could talk about, but we'll do that later. There are. All right. Uh, five on five yet again. Maybe they should take a shot if there's not 10 people on the track. There you go, because it's been 10 people all night. Which Havoc is where, oh my again, God, Taken Suze. out by Suze. Holy, Holy moly. There's swear words I want to There's swear words I want to say. I'm not going to. Havoc is uh, not going to let Suze get away with that, though. She's up there, like, you know, doing all the murdering. And talk about the hits here Ooh. at the back of the pack. Midge Mayhem being yeah, taken out by a samesies. number of people. Yeah, oh my God. Midge, though, she's so fast. She's just like, oh, you hit me out. Now I'm back on the now track. Now I'm back on the track. And no, you can't recycle not. me. Yeah. Now what? All righty. So, ooh, Havoc out the front of the pack. Takes Suze a hit again. from Suze. But We've been going for 40 seconds. Oh, before a lead jammer, Midge Mayhem. Oh, and Havoc elbows. Forearms. forearms. Yeah, I heard the forearm as they went around there. Mm. Uh, lead jammer to the crushers and a power jam. This is not what the Everybody, hoods want right now. Everybody, you're right. Mitch Mayhem with a fancy 360 over there. My favorite thing is when a jammer comes into the pack and then gets hung up by their own blocker. <laughs> That's not my favorite thing. Uh, well, That's yeah, a as a jammer, thing. you know it's a horrible it's thing. It's horrible. You shouldn't get excited. No, no. It's we can't actually see what's happening because there's a zebra herd in in the middle. Everybody in our is line of in sight. the way. We know Midge Mayhem just got another yes. five points, and now we can see a little bit better here. Midge Mayhem coming in. Oh, a nice spin! And another a nice spin. hit by Shehu. I'm going to spin. I'm going. Ah, Shehu! <laughs> Already, so the Crusher is able to increase their lead. 15, 88, 10, 34 remaining on the clock for this half of the bout. I like talking about zebra huddles too, and fiber. <laughs> fiber and, and orange zebra soda. We should be drinking way. orange soda. Orange soda would be good right now. Do you think that the orange crushers drink orange crush before their games? I don't know. 
I mean, if, if I do? were like on their team and not skating, I probably would. But then they'd have to do it before every game or something. Something. You know, it'd be better than some other things people do. All right. Uh, <laughs> one, 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 Chiba Yes. Jamming lead. for the Star Crusher's pass. lead. Oh, man, that was sneaky. That was nice. Now, Chokes able to make it past yeah. Chibi Dangerous and out. But Chibi Dangerous was the only one who was not fooled by that sneakery. She was right on it. Uh, she was. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to stop True. Chokes from getting out. Chokes is basically amazing. Probably, o again, the fiber. And Oba made it in, got three points, called off the oh, jam. Good. She was aware of where that other jammer was. So, so that's going to hold the Crushers to three points on that jam. Crushers changing up their jammer line a little bit. It's going to be bad data jamming for the first time this evening for the Crushers. Oh, yeah. Cool. And it's Shredder Wheats. Shredder Wheats because we yep. need more fiber. Yeah. I think, I think they'd need more fiber, yeah. <laughs> and we're off. And Shredder Wheats taken out off right off the line pretty much, but able to recover pretty quickly. Get in. And Ooh, now she's out. The outside. Wheat Shredder Jammer. Wheats. She slid right Boom. out. She did. She did. She slid right through. Bad Data still looking for a way out of the pack as Shredder Wheats is almost back for a scoring pass. The pack starts to slow down and stretch out. Data just she who to go. Oh, and she who takes her out. Going to recycle her. Oh, hmm. Shredder Wheats, oh my goodness, uh, cutting the track penalty. Yep. No lead jammer anymore. This is going to be a two-minute jam, and Bad Data having a bad time getting out of that pack. Oh. It looks like she did go for the pass to Whizbang Weasley, and Weasley just won to beat at the front of the pack. That's Major Little Pain. LP doing a really good shovel there, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Weasley able to get out. Now, Pack's going to reset right here in a great turn for you guys. Turn number one. And Weasley back around now looking for points for the Crushers. I love her name. Whizbang Weasley. Yeah, that's a good name. And underneath that helmet, she actually has uh, Red orange hair. hair so. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's natural, so she could be a Weasley. Yeah. I wish I could be a Weasley. Shredder Wheats back from the penalty box, picks up five points, and that was because <laughs> she'd already gotten the jammer point before she went to the box. You're good at explaining the things, you know that? I, I try. Yeah. Everybody give a quick shout-out for Bangers and Smash. Nah. He's been announcing since, uh, oh, since uh, I since, started. Since Midge Mayhem started, too. I, yeah, we I, started I, I around the same time. We talked about mm -hmm. I think I was the first one to do the high -o for oh, yeah? Midge Mayhem. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that hit through the zebra huddle, but somebody just, uh, their helmet um, ricocheted. It flew off. Yeah. Now, Shredder Wheat's doing a really good Boom. job there. Able to increase the crushers. And she knows I mean, it. I'm sorry, the hood's lead. 15-8 um, <laughs> on the jam there, so the hood's able to make some headway, even without having lead jam. Some jammer. hoodway? Some hoodway. Okay. I like that one. We weren't doing any. <laughs> uh, and oh, now, we now are there's an, an actual zebra huddle. Yeah. What do you think that they're talking about? Where they're going to go after. You think so? The bout. They're going to go to the after party. Mm, yes, the after party, which we should talk about as well. Yeah, even if you're sitting at home, uh, if you're in the Denver area, you, you can should come do to a shot. Greenfield Sports Bar, 3355 South Yarrow Street in Lakewood. <laughs> Come join us. Or do another shot. You know what? They're probably going to have to go to the after party because they haven't been able to do... They haven't been able to do any shots. The shot. Yeah, exactly. You guys can do a shot for me, though, because my non-alcoholic beverage, because I'm not allowed to have alcohol, is empty. And that's sad. I'll so do a you, shot of my should, Diet Coke for you. You should all do a shot for me. I have to say the gun show going on on the pivot line right now is amazing. Gun show? Oh, yeah. That's what the uh, NSO is doing. <laughs> oh, Nora doing a little chest blocking. That would probably be pretty scary, it, I think. It's scary to see Nora on the track. She's, um, she's, she's just <clears throat> there. Like, yeah. I mean, all righty, so back into the action. It's uh, Harper killing it today. Oh, Harper actually recently made... Uh, the Rocky Mountain Roller Girls contenders um, awesome. within the past two weeks. So congratulations to her, and, and we can see why. She's doing a great job. 
I think she's the jammer who turned the the lead differential around with the with the hood's first lead after a while. She's and she's up there. Looks like maybe close to just disco to go. And which that, that is not she the could <laughs> she could get by and I don't. It's oh. Meanwhile, yep. I gotta say, Pootie Tang Jinxter. having so many yeah. struggles. Oh, she's Pootie's out first, not lead. Not lead. No so pass, Harper can no still get lead, which uh, she must not know because the star is off her head. And there's a new rule change, which means that she now cannot, cannot become be eligible lead, for lead, even if she puts it on and passes everyone legally. You're right. So it's gonna be a two-minute jam. Yeah. So that's that's one of those things where jammers really need to be aware and listen for that double whistle to hear if the other jammer gets lead. Because if they don't, you don't want to take that star off. You're uh, this jam right. is now going to go two minutes, which is another 47 seconds, which Hoodie is just brutal. Still struggling in the, yeah. in the pack there, though. The Hood's really turning on the defense. She's Nora gone to the penalty box, oh so the yeah. pressure's down one. Yeah, she's been killing it. So this okay. is sort of that part of the, of the first half where people are probably starting to feel a little bit tired, except for Disco, who's still killing everyone. <laughs> So Booty Tang picks up four for the Crushers. And Harper Bazaar out through the outside, able to get her four on that pass. So we're matching points right now. Booty Tang already back in for another scoring yep, pass. And here comes just Harper. Hung up and Harper threw. Boom. And oh, nice. Nice avoidance on the outside. Another five points yep. that time for Harper. Blockers are starting to look pretty tired themselves. Two minutes is, is tough on our jammers, but it's equally difficult on the blockers in a jam like that. She who and I were discussing that oh, in the really? last about how two minutes to the audience doesn't seem like yeah. much, but when you're out yeah. there having to shove these yeah. people yeah. out of your yep. way who yep. don't yep. want to yep. let you yep. move, it is so difficult. Yep. Particularly for jammers, but I think in that situation where the where they were doing such a good job containing the jammers, it's it's equally difficult for those blockers. Yeah, I mean they're and, and you don't think about how much of a mental toll it oh my takes God. too, because as a blocker, for mm -hmm. sure, you really have to know what's going on everywhere at every time. There's yeah. no break for a blocker. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, too. We talk about the jammers needing to have their awareness, um, but the blockers really need to know what's going on with both jammers, um, with all of the other blockers and all of that, too. So I really think that one of the things that makes the best derby players the best derby players is their awareness of all things. So, like, Bangers and Smash was talking about Midge Mayhem and her amazing awareness earlier. Um, I think that's one of the things that, that makes her so good, and it's one of the things that makes, you know, all of these skaters so good. While we're in this official timeout for some track repair, I want to tell you, you can catch the Rocky Mountain uh, Roller Girls' next doubleheader right here on a April 25th at Rocky Mountain Roller Hockey. It's going to be the Red Riding Hoods versus the Sugar Kill Gang, followed up by the Doom Dooms Daisies versus Denver Roller Derby's Green Barrettes, so another interleague Ooh, bout coming up. Fun. That'll be real fun. And then in May, I'm really looking forward to this. I know. May 16th, again, right here at Rocky Mountain Roller Hockey, and you want to be here live for this one. It's going to be the 5280 Fight Club taking on Gotham Girls Roller Derby. I'm not sure I've ever heard of them. I, I don't know who they are. You don't? I'm just, I'm, of course I'm kidding. Um, Number one for so many years now, Gotham. Who? Gotham. Gotham girls. You know, I think derby. the last time they lost was to uh, the 5280 Fight Club in 2010. That may be correct. Um, and maybe it'll happen again. You got to be here to see it. You re <laughs> you've got to be here to see it. You really need. That's going to be, gonna be a really fun event. Um, we are really looking forward to hosting Gotham. Um, one of their players, you know, you, I, she, nobody really knows her. Um, but uh, this girl, I guess her name is Bonnie Thunder. She was recently in a Petco commercial, um, which was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys saw that. That is pretty cool. <clears throat> Google you know, it right now. You want to know what I want to know Wait, about no. that, though? Google it after here's, the Here's bell. my question about that. Um, so Bonnie Thunders and her girlfriend are both on on Gotham, right? Yes. And they, uh, and they have this dog, Freddie Thunders. But I, w I wasn't sure why it was Freddie Thunders and not Freddie Thunders flowers or freddy thunders <laughs> you know like like why is it just thunders shouldn't he hyphenate i don't know you don't have to it's something that each child has to make up for their own mind i guess <laughs> anyway that was that was my concern um so i'm really hoping to uh to learn the answer to that question already so uh, this official mitch, timeout, is that mitch blocking the, the hoods now have a jammer 
in the penalty box. So there Harper must Bizarre. have been a Something. challenge, and it, it's changed things up. So it means we're going to start with a power jam for the Orange Crushers, and look who's wearing the star. Oh, my God. The Terrible Suze is jamming, and Midge Mayhem is wearing the stripe blocking. Curious. Interesting choice. Yeah. All right. Well, and obviously, Suze that's why they made jam. it. Suze is a powerhouse. She is a powerhouse. I, you know, she's a really good roller derby player, which makes her admirable, but she's also an incredibly nice person. I got to say, the thing I the thing I like about Suze, having an opportunity to, goes, to train on the track with her, is that she's always so calm and centered, like so zen. Yeah, nothing totally. gets Nothing gets her riled up, really. Totally. Oh, Coming oh, in again. Oh, 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 oh nice oh, avoidance of the potential oh, cut there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw her face, but she knows it was she close. She saw it coming, and yeah, it was a close call. But yeah, she's, that was a close one there, too. Alrighty, so I will let you know that uh, amazing. Harper Bazaar has returned oh, to yes, the track, she has. and the Crushers are turned on the defense. Yeah, Meanwhile. and Midge Mayhem killing it blocking. Harper going back to the box. Oh, no, this is... That's not good for the hood. No. Not good for oh, the hood. Oh, Mitch Mayhem with a little. Oh, offense. Ah, Suze didn't take the hole that was offered, but you the offense totally blew up the hood's wall, so I, that was good. I got to tell you, when it comes to Mitch Mayhem, you can't say a little O. Why? Because she's little? <laughs> that was amazing offense. It Mitch was threw amazing everything offense. into it, and I don't know if you guys saw that she fell down. She threw so much force into it, which it was perfect. She's a she She's is strong. so strong out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to talk about Derby athlete? That's Derby yeah. athlete right there. So yeah, she's Sue's getting recycled and now hung up in the wall, pushed to the outside. It has to recycle. That's one thing I love about these home team bouts is um, when uh, people play outside of their comfort zone. So like seeing Midge play offense for Sue's when that usually happens the other way is kind of exciting. It, Same it thing is. with Shehu and you know playing offense. For her jammer. Oh, we've got a star pass by the Hoods, LP, with the star now. And the time expired, ending that jam. Two and a half minutes remaining. That was a very nice jam for Suze. 20 points on the jam for Suze. Yeah. She's pretty solid. All right, this time we've got uh, <coughs> Shredder. Versus Ova Achiba. Ah. So I feel like I feel like I've played against Anova Achiba on a different team. That's why I was wondering if she was a transfer. Uh, maybe at some point uh, I'm unaware. Or maybe of somebody a else has the similar name. Not sure. It's possible. Anyway, uh, back to this game. Ova Achiba, oh, lead there jammer. There she is, overachieving, as they Ova achieving, yeah. would say. Oh, but Shredder <laughs> hot on her heels. Yes. Now it's a foot race to the pack, and who's in front? <clears throat> the Crushers take the back of the pack. And the pack speeds up. Oh, going to go ahead and call it off. Hustling to get there. She really narrowed that gap. Um, Shredder many, putting on the pressure. She sure did. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. Fiber. Yes. The whole pressure thing. How many points were there on that gym? <laughs> no points awarded on yeah, that Yeah, probably because Shredder was hustling around the corner there. We've got about a minute 15 remaining in the half. 39-126, Orange Crushers with the lead right now, but there's a whole other 30 minutes of play. And there's the whistle for this jam. It is... She who cannot be named, jamming versus against... Versus Pootie Tang. Pootie is out. Uh-oh. LP down. Taking L her time, getting back up. She's up, though. That's good. It looked for a second there like she might not. Yeah. Uh, looked like maybe a little ankle concern going on, but yeah. she's up and back in the pack. Pootie Tang through, four points on the board. She who coming in takes it to the infield and quickly recycles. And now we're in the blind zone there for us. We yep. know stuff's happening. Pootie Tang through, gonna pick up oh, five oh, oh. this time. <clears throat> Hooters hot on her heels now. <clears throat> Pack waiting for everybody now at the inside the start box. Pootie Tang coming through quickly out. She who coming in gets hung up by Karen Your Ass Up and uh, Nora P. Nefrin. Now Ooh. just Nora to go. Nice fake out. That was, that was yeah. She who's super jukey. Um, super jukey. I like super that. Super jukey. She is. And she really uh, 
Um, Nora didn't know which way to go. She, you know. That, Alrighty. Anyway, roller that derby halftime. Halftime. Yes. A very interesting first half of the game. Yes. So we're at 47-139. We're going to be back in just about 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bangers and Smash. Phantom Menace. Thank hey, you, uh, you guys should all take a shot and uh, probably eat some probably cereal. Probably eat some food of some sort. Yeah, cereal yes, would be good. Especially if you are rooting for the hoods, you might have a bowl of cereal or something. Or maybe. Thank, you. Thank you guys for joining us on ColoradoSports.tv. We'll be back in 10 minutes. We'll be back.
Skating with um, ground control. Yep, yeah. I am too. That's how this happened. No. Oh yeah, you said something earlier yeah. about it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ColoradoSports.tv. You're going to have to listen to me and Phantom Menace going on and on and on for the next half hour. <laughs> Woohoo! A little more than a half an hour. A little more, yeah, because you know, timeouts time outs and things like that, yeah. Um, so we're about to get back into the second half of the action. We started off with an early lead by the Red Riding Hoods, and then the Crushers came back and kind of dominated Crushed for a while it. there. Um, the Crushed hoods, the lead. The Hoods did get a few lead jammers there uh, during the, the latter half of that period. Just wasn't enough. And so hopefully during halftime they went, they discussed, they got their heads back in this game, and they make a pretty strong comeback. 30 minutes is plenty of time to make up the difference here. Um, totally. This game is not over at all. Um, roller derby scores are, are pretty high. When I have friends that come that are non-derby people, it's, it's sort of hard to take it all in, of course, but then the score is a little bit confusing as well. Looks like uh, okay, we're, up for our second period. we're playing roller derby soon. Yes, we're, we're actually, there's the whistle. Nora P. Nefren jamming for the Orange Crushers versus Shredder Wheats for the uh, Hoods. Hoods. I forgot where I was for a minute there. Yeah. Um... Nora not normally a jammer and Shredder Wheats uh, lead. out lead Her Majesty tries that last second hit but uh, Shredder Wheats says ain't gonna happen Nora P. Nefren picking Ooh. up a Don't know. cutting the, Cut track the track penalty so power jam for Shredder Wheats this is what the hoods want right now yep. and there is five points on the board for and if you could pick a jammer to have out for a power jam I would Serial totally pick Shredder Reeves. One. She's amazing. Um, I agree. All of the Hoods jammers are really good, but Shredder is one of their Fight Club jammers. She's also really up and coming on Fight Club right now. Um, yeah, she's just been killing it. I agree. I think I know one of the other Fight Club uh, jammers. That's up and coming? Sharon Tacos was over there, too. Ha! <laughs> I wasn't um, talking about an up-and-coming one. I'm talking about the one I'm sitting next oh, to. Oh, right. <laughs> but Shredder Already making it look easy. 15 points, I know. 15 yeah. points on the jam. Uh, and Nora just returning from the penalty box. Follow, follows right into that wall of uh, red. And there's another five. This is, um, it reminds me of the first couple minutes of the first half. So I'm really curious to see if the Hoods can can hang on Have to this momentum. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, I, you know, Nora P. Nefren going for a helmet cover oh, no. pass, oh, picks up no. another track cut. This is what the Hoods really need right now. They are really climbing. Yep. Already 25 points on the jam for Shredder Wheats, and she's in for another scoring pass. And the thing about her being an up-and-coming jammer is that uh, she kind of does what she's told. So, boom, a little 360 on the outside there. So when her bench coach, Pippi Skullknocking, says, keep going, keep going, She's just going to keep going, which she did, which is why she's scored so many points there. She did a great job. Now, it um, looks like the Hood's doing a little change-up to their jammer yes, rotation, too. Probably uh, smart. We're getting Crucial Taunt with the star for yep. the first time this evening. Yep. Uh, we lovingly call her Crouton. Yes. Do you think that she likes Caesar salad with croutons? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe after all the crouton jokes, she's like, I'm just done with croutons. You think? I'll take the soup. Maybe she likes, like, crunchy noodles instead. Crunchy noodles instead. Power jam for the hoods as Nora P. Nefren sat just before the end of that last jam. Uh, crouton really looking to take advantage oh, of this. Disco. That is a tough wall of crushers yep. to get through, I'll tell you. Yep. But she's getting some good offense, so yep. th the pack is moving. Uh, good penalty kill by the Crushers there. Nora now returning from the penalty yeah. box. She's just really got to stay in the middle of this time, I think, uh, and not get another track cut. But well, the, the Hoods Nora's would love that right now. To, to make it up the middle. I agree. I think so. Crucial Taunt did make it out. Lead jammer going to the Hoods. This is good news for the Hoods. This is oh, what they Disco need to do. Oh, Disco with the star. Love seeing this. She's an amazing blocker, but I love watching her when jam. When she jams, I agree, yeah. She's really good at it. So, Crouton coming in, able to get four points yep. on the board and calls off the jam because she did not want to risk Disco getting any points there. 
So like we said early on, that score gap is closing and closing fast. Sometimes when you have a pivot with a star on, you want to keep them on the track as long as possible because they're not used to jamming. But in the situation when it's somebody like Disco who's so good at it. So I think that was a really smart call off. All right. So we got Supersonic versus... Uh, Major Lil Pain, yeah, okay. I just was waiting to see the face because mm-hmm. she was just so mm. far down there, I couldn't see who it was. Both jammers taking out Major Lil Pain to the infield, Supersonic to the outfield, both recycling. Interestingly enough, uh, LP has taken off the star. She must have thought I uh, think Sonic Supersonic. got lead before okay. she was knocked out. I think that's what happened. Uh, okay, okay. And LP is going to pick up a uh, forearms call. So this is not what the Hoods want, uh, to return a power gym when they just got such a good gain. Yeah. Lots of action in the pack. Yes. And there's no jammer yet. Okay, they're supersonic now. (laughs) Is this also? No, she's jammed. Yeah, she's jammed a couple times during the first half. And there's five points on the board for the Crushers, so we're, now we're up ten. Another great song. I agree. <laughs> LP is standing in the box, and uh, we've got Supersonic in for her third scoring pass. And another five points for the Crushers there. LP able to quickly get out of that pack. She wants to shut this down. And there it is. Oh, LP uh, going down. It looked like a little toe stop malfunction there, but she back up and fine. So, Hooter jamming for the hoods against Booty Tang, Poot and Hoot. Poot and Hoot. <laughs> now, where did Pootie Tang come from? I don't know. She's a she's a recent transfer. I, I'm not sure what league she was in previously. Um, she's got a lot of raw talent. I'm cur- I'm I'm excited to see her develop this season. Hooter, who uh, out lead, doing it and, old school style. Yeah, and Poot, <laughs> also out. Now she who coming around for a scoring pass. Uh, Wide open on the inside, but then... Making uh, it look easy. Boom! Nice little jump and a call. That is why I am in love with She Who Cannot Be Named. She's amazing. So Hood's closing that gap a little bit further. uh, 85, one... One... Something. 54. (laughs) Havoc versus Ova Achieva. There's nothing rhymey there that I can do. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything yeah. either. Um, Again, we're at five on five on the track. I know. And there's the, the whistle. Oh. Ova Chiva finds an open inside line. Lead jammer goes to the uh, Crushers. Havoc, Havoc. Uh, looks like she's trying to make out with Suze. Oh, 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 but she slides through on the inside there. She just had to give Suze a couple hugs before yeah. going through. I mean, you know, why not? It's uh, only nice. Yeah. Cruising around the track. Oh, Havoc hustled. Oh, she almost got a point there before before Ova called it off, but not not quite not fast quite, enough. Yeah. It was I love watching the jammers tonight though when it when it comes to the whistles, they are very attentive to skate through the fourth whistle. I see yes. a lot of jammers that don't. Yeah, that's really frustrating. Oh, look at Midge. <laughs> We've got a nice little dance going on for Midge Mayhem on the line. You guys probably can't see it because she's tiny and all of those blockers are giants. But I can't believe this is like the longest song ever. Scream jamming stuck on Whizbang and Nora. And Midge Mayhem mm. finds that outside line. Mm. She's out lead jammer. I really thought Screamer was going to yep, get yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Midge is just too fast. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Scream tripped over the ref there, Purple Rain. That was interesting. I've never never seen it's that. Purple Rain, get out of my way. Oh, they should play that next. <laughs> Midge Mayhem putting five, what, five points on the board. <laughs> and we've had a star pass by, wait, nope. 
Not Looks yet. like an unsuccessful star pass attempt by the Hoods. Um, Chokes has it in her hand, but she's being instructed by the pack refs to remain. Wait, no. Apparently, she is going to I don't the penalty know what box. I thought they were telling her that I don't know what happened. I'm. It's We can't really see in that corner. The uh, zebra so herd. All I can imagine is it, either she had gotten a penalty before the pass started well, to happen it, it or must, it was an illegal she pass. She must have because, look, our jammer is, is still out there. Exactly. So that's the thing about star passes is when they go wrong, you can end up with your jammer and your pivot in the box. Exactly. So I don't know what happened, but um, I would say that, you know, the Hoods were moderately successful in that they've only had one player go to the box in, in, an, in a failed star pass attempt. And Scream, unable to get around Nora there on the inside. And so Captain Crunch says... Fall down, Nora. Yes. And and normally when Captain Crunch tells you to do something, you do it. I thought Nora might be one that, you know, it would not work out, but it did. Midge Mayhem continuing to rack up the points here. Gets stuck in the pack. She's out, though. There's another five. Jam comes to an end. Crusher's really able to increase their lead there. That was a 29-point jam for oh. Midge Mayhem. Well, that's just average for her. <laughs> Hoods did pick up two. Uh, that's a lot of points, but I'm not going to get excited for anything less than 35. All righty, so jamming for the first time this evening, oh, Her look. Majesty for the Crushers. 0-0, zero, zero, sort of. 87-187. There you go. We're starting all over. Yes. Her Majesty and uh, Crucial Take a Taunt. shot. Crucial Taunt taken out by Supersonic, but a multiplayer block being called on. Uh, uh, no, no, no. It's uh, Well, it could have been a multiplayer. It's uh, Crouton. Jammers don't block. usually get multis, yeah, but they can. That's strange. You can. If you are um, attached to one of your blockers and someone touches the attachment, it's still a multi. Yeah, I was waiting for a blocker to leave, and then I saw a crucial mm -hmm. taunt leave the track. That it's unusual, it's but it's an unusual penalty to see. Yeah, Absolutely. it happens. Her Majesty uh, taken to the infield there by the Hoods defense. They were doing like a box defense there, and uh, she quickly gets back on and is now driving on a wall of three. And Ooh. there she's able to get out. S nice little stay on one skate. It was a it was a nice hit by Havoc, but not quite enough. Crouton back on the track. So decent penalty kill by the Hoods there. That is yeah, going to be a back solid. block. Oh, my goodness. Her Majesty picking up a back block, even from way over here. Yeah. I saw the back block happen. I didn't, but, you know, I'm kind of squinty right now. This is what the Hoods need. Yes. Um, 30 seconds unopposed as far as points go. Uh, and Cru Ooh. Crouton really doing a good job getting through on that first pass there. Some uh, offense attempt by Havoc. And uh, looks like Shredder coming up to help out you know i love when jammers play O for a jam like when jammers are blocking and they play offense it's like it's like we know what it feels like you know so we're gonna we're gonna help our brethren do or as, our, our do as much as you can to get them through absolutely yeah. uh it looks like uh ky did pick up a penalty there so the crushers down a blocker crouton still working on her pass here oh that was another back block that time I saw that one, you, you know it. And immediately returning from the penalty uh, box and getting it—that's not a good thing. But of course but it the, is hoods for the hoods are loving it. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Crouton picking up uh, ten during that pass, and it looks like a, a an official review being called by the Crushers. I don't think they're happy with that back block call, but uh. you know I can understand why they're confused because. Um, it was definitely near the bra strap. If, you, if you're if you unaware, the rule is you can hit from the bra strap out. So bra strap towards the shoulder is a, is a legal target zone. And it was definitely near the bra strap area. Um, well, actually, it looks like this. It looked like they were signaling for an official review, but it's just a timeout. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, nobody went to the middle, and I guess they're just going to live with it. Well, they should. They should. Yeah. It's. I feel like very rarely is a call like that going to be overruled. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's it's tough yeah. to get, to win those kind of calls. Yes. Um, because the refs are there for the safety, so they've yes, got to make yes. they've got to make the call on behalf of safety. Yeah. Speaking of which, shout out for our officials. 
they are volunteering their time this evening, so thank you, officials. We couldn't do this without you. Oh my God, we have two crushers to a full hood pack. Everyone, take a shot. This, this we also an have jam. the Serial Sisters. Take another shot. <laughs> And now that you can't understand anything we're saying, we're just going to talk gibberish for the rest of the evening. All right, Crusher's really turning on the defense there, though. But Lead Jammer is going to go to the Hoods, Harper Bazaar. And now the Hoods looking to Ooh, hold up KY beautiful. as Harper Bazaar coming through for yeah. a scoring pass. Beautiful offense from LP there on, on Disco. There's five more for the Hoods. The Hoods breaking that 100 mark. Now the penalty box is empty again. Her Majesty coming oh. back in. Oh, nice hip hit from a from Disco. Yeah, from Acres. She's Acres today. I guess we should call uh, that's her. That's what it says on the back of her jersey. <laughs> Oops. Uh, her Majesty eligible to score. Jam comes to an end. Harper Bazaar gets another four points on the board for the Hoods. 106, 192, 16, 20 remaining on the clock. Shredder jamming for the hoods. Taking Pootie on. Tang Pootie for the Tang. crusher. Shredder Tang. Pootie Wheats. Pootie Wheats. Uh, <laughs> that's just funny. I don't that's know why funny. Pootie Wheats is funny, that's but it is. Because of the fiber. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway, Shredder, oh, around Sue's for lead. Boom. Pootie Tang, uh, she who looking to take her out, but Pootie Tang able to get around. So it is a race to the pack, about 10 feet separating the jammers. The pack is stretched out. The Hood's doing a good job. They caught bad data. They knocked her out so that that point was guaranteed. Review. An official review because no points were awarded there, and the and the, oh, the yep, hoods yep. want that one point. Yes, and I don't blame them. No, that's a good bench staff, and the hoods are being benched by Raven Lunachick and Pippi Skullknocking. Um, and that was Pippi that stepped in there. And yeah. was like, give me my one point. Now these are the official reviews that tend to be winnable. Yes, yes, points yes. challenges. Yes, so it's. When you use them, uh, you, you'll most often see the official review come up when there's some points question. Yeah. Either you gave too many or you didn't give enough yes. to one team or the other. That's when you're going to see these happen. A lot of times penalty calls and things like that, unless it was absolutely obvious to everybody, they're not going to win. Agreed. But points calls are a good time to, to use your official review. Yeah, because everybody knows that the person fell down and it's it's the rule that you're questioning or the inf I don't. I don't know. I've had too many shots. I haven't had any shots. You guys have had too many shots for me. Anyway, Bangers and Smash is right. Of course he is. He knows all the things. I don't know about that, but all the all the did they get the point? I I don't remember what the score was before. I, I believe don't think they got they the do. point cuz I think it says 107 now. It does. I believe it, it does. was at 106. Okay, okay. So 107 192. I uh, don't know how much time is left cuz I can't Oh, there we go. 15 20 remaining. And we're going. It is Ova Achieva versus Honey Bunches, Honey of, chokes. bunches of Chokes. She's got those clusters. Oh, she slid around a little 180 around Disco, doing a little chest hitting on Nora. She says, you know what? I don't care. You can't mess with me. I've got clusters of fibery goodness. Ova Achieva was out and lead and comes back in and picks up a back block call. Oh, boom. That means power jam for the hoods. Yeah. They need this. Let's see how those clusters go. Oh, wait. There's a zebra herd. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Chokes is solid. Look at her. Chokes taking so boom. many hard hits. Oh, my god. No, gosh. she's not taking them. She's giving them. She is giving them right she, back, that's for sure. Uh, Chokes looking to spin to win is taken out just a toast up. Out I know, by Disco. I know. She is hard to get out. Um, Disco's ha Disco had to work to get her out of bounds, which Absolutely. is saying something. Um, now Nora looking to take her out, but gets laid hit out by, by Captain, Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch. 
And again, Disco taking out Honey Bunches of Chokes. <laughs> but Captain Crunch uh, says, no, you cannot go behind me, Disco. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> Serial Sister love there. She says, uh, I may not have as much fiber. I may have some more sugary, you know, goodness in my cereal, but you still don't get a mess with my fibery friend. Ova Chiba returning from Chokes the penalty is out box. After a minute and 32 seconds. Uh, you, and She's smiling. Yeah, She's laughing. She I know. Got out of that. that was tough. That was real tough. Ova Chiba now back from the penalty box is taking as much of a beating, if not uh, more, from the Hoods defense as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Chokes oh, coming chokes. in. This time she didn't have so much trouble getting through the back. I That's going like to be there might have been like some fiber buildup that sort of just like helped her push through. Pushed right through on the second on the second pass. So as that jam comes to an end, we get five four hoods with a one point net gain on that jam. Worth it. <laughs> And uh, Her Majesty. Her Majesty. Yeah, I, can't, you, I can't think of anything there either. Whose Majesty? No. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Here we go. It's it's time. She who uh, on the inside gets hung up there, but then Her Majesty finds her way out first. She who with those crazy feet. She who finds her way out, and here comes Her Majesty into the pack. Hot into the pack, gets stuck behind the wall of hoods. Oh my God! She who with a beautiful apex jump, she scores four. Ah, oh, Her Majesty scores four. That is that's big for the hoods. It's essentially a zero. Jam. Yeah, which was a lot of work for zero, but it's better than a lot of work for a negative four. Um, our differential is continuing to narrow. The hoods are down by 84 right now. I'm glad so we're you getting there. Because I can't. Uh, it's only because it's 200. <laughs> so it was Makes easy. It easy. The yeah. zeros. Cheater. Yeah. <laughs> so. Alrighty, back into the action on the track. We've got Shredder Wheats taking Boom! out Supersonic. Lead jammer Shredder Wheats. Because she's amazing. She shredded those, those uh, blockers. I think that's a reference to skiing. I'm not sure. I know she likes to snowboard or oh, ski yeah, or something. Oh, yeah, that, that would make sense. She's a shredder and a serial sister, which is like a double entendre, which is kind of cool. Shredder well, that's not the sound of my Coke opening. Shredder Wheats has that equipment malfunction. She oh, notices shoot. Super Sonic coming in. Doesn't call it soon enough. Super Sonic picks up two. And so it's shredder. match for two. Oh, wow. Actually, Shredder with three, so one point gain. That's, not a bad. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. 11.07 remain, 119.202. Midge Mayhem taking on Havoc. I have, I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> and there's the whistle. Here we go. Oh, Havoc. Man. Havoc really driving. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, uh, Havoc almost lead, but Midge Mayhem just a second out. Does first. what she does. But Havoc gets there. And she is hustling around. You guys can see her pretty clearly that, right now. That was She's nice speedy. footwork. Very speedy footwork. There. Oh, oh, oh. What's happening? Midge oh, Mayhem Midge. with a back, back block. block. Hmm. Power jam for the Hoods. This is what the Hoods need. Yeah, and Havoc is a great jammer to have on the track when this happens. Havoc picking up five already, coming in for another scoring pass. She's doing a little 360-ing herself, or 180-ing, I should say. Right around to Wanda Pizza. 187 ing as nice. they were. Yeah, she made that look easy. Havoc little back in again. from Mistress Terrible. And Ooh. nice shove there by Weasley of Her Majesty taking out Havoc. Havoc, yep. Havoc though comes oh, right. Oh man, that was oh that was that was that was really beautiful on both parts because Havoc was just hauling balls up the inside line and and Weasley was able to to get there and beat her. That was that was wizard. Yeah, it was very athletic on both of their parts. <sighs> Midge Mayhem back from the penalty box, two points on the pass. Havoc passing Havoc the star. Passes the star to Shihu. Yeah, now. Here's the thing. Oh, some kind of illegal star pass, which means that she who is not the jammer and has to return as the blocker. Now, here's the thing for me. 
When you are passing on a scoring pass, it's a lot different than when you're passing on a non-scoring pass because the panty has to be on someone's head for it to score points. Absolutely, yeah. So had that been a successful pass, there would have been some points loss. Yes. Uh, it looked like the panty passed over some blockers, but she might have passed them with it on her head before she did the panty pass. I'm not sure. It is a possibility. So Midge Mayhem making good use of this power jam that was picked up here by the Crushers, um, able to gain Extend eight for the, the Crushers. Yeah. Um, we should remind you guys of some things. In case you missed this earlier, the after party, if you are not too drunk, you should have another shot. Uh, or we are having an after party at Greenfield Sports Bar in Lakewood. Be there. Whoa! Right, back into the action Whoa! on the track. Crazy O from Tracy Disco Acres. That's it. Pootie Tang jamming for the Crushers. Assault and Pepper with a nice hit there. Pootie Tang pick up lead, stayed in the inside yeah. of the track there, so she was able to get up and just go. Yeah, Peppa is sort of uh, the unsung hero. You know, she she makes a lot of really amazing things happen, um, but they're they're usually the things that you don't always notice. She's not a big hitter. Although she's very skilled at offense, but um, that was one where she... Good news. Low yeah. block on... Well, good news. Good news for the, for hoods. the hoods. Low block on Pootie Tang. Havoc has returned already five points gained, and she is looking to put points on the board. Yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's really hard when you're a jammer, you know, and you have a hard jam like Havoc had <clears throat> where you're on a power jam and you're really trying to narrow the differential and play hard. And then you go to the box and you're tired and you come back out and you've got to keep going. And, and so uh, Havoc ended up picking up another penalty, which is, I think, pretty common. It does, yeah, I've, I see that happen a lot when the yeah. jammer transitions from one jam where they had a penalty into the next jam. Yep. Uh, it makes it a little difficult. Yep. Um, so she's taking the star off as she returns to the pack. Um, Pooty Tang back in there, uh, riding the infield line, careful not to pick up a cut herself there. Um, How did you see that? I, I just happened to look when it Through happened. Through the herd? It, it, was, it was pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. I, I, there's... It looks like Havoc has decided to retain the star. She's um, at the front of the pack pushing. She need, but she's through. Uh, they but were gonna pass it, but she was through. She goes. Was that her initial pass? That was her initial okay. pass. So, yeah, it's like her and Shredder had like this silent conversation where you know the hands went towards each other and and the star was about to be passed, and then they decided no. I will also say another thing that's really difficult to do that many, I would say, I think every one of these skaters is doing is to both block and jam. It's a very difficult transition to make because the two um, positions are, are so different. They are very different. I agree. And and everyone is doing a really great job uh, transitioning back and forth between playing both positions. Alrighty, so we've got Ova Achieva jamming for the Crushers versus... Uh, uh, Harper Bazaar uh, for the hood. <laughs> yes. I forgot where I was for a second. Oba Jiva Lee Jammer. Everybody take a shot. <laughs> Oba Jiva Lee Jammer. She who is now Jammer for the uh, hoods with a nice star pass happening there. Nora going to the penalty box. So Crushers will be down one oh, in no. the next jam. It's all right. <laughs> uh, Phantom Menace spilled some soda. I'll be back shortly. Midge Mayhem taking on Shredder Wheats as uh, we get ready for the next jam. Crushers down one blocker. This could be a benefit for the Hoods. And as we get going, Shredder Wheats looking to go up the middle. Gets hung up by... Sues and Midge Mayhem able to make her way out. Not going to be lead. There was a, a no pass, no penalty. Oh, doesn't that mean that Shredder is lead? Shredder is lead, and calls and it off immediately. Recognizes it and calls it off immediately. Very That's well one done. of those. We were talking about the best 
players having the best awareness. Shredder was very aware of the situation. A lot of times, um, if you're not out first, you don't recognize that your lead. Um, so that was really big that Havoc recognized that and then called the jam off. Absolutely. So we're going to do a pivot line start again. We've got uh, Pootie Tang for the Crushers taking on Major Little Payton for the Hoods. And uh, Pootie Tang gets hung up in the wall of red. Major Little Payne looking for a way out. Uh, gets a little hung up by her own blockers, but she's out first. Lead jammer to the hoods. And Major Pootie Little Payne typically blocks. Oh, yeah, Pootie Tang with a cut. But she's, I mean, look at her. Truly, she's a, she's a very incredible jammer um, and pivot. She's got amazing footwork. She's strong. I also feel like size is a factor when you're jamming, and people who are a little bit shorter or a little bit taller have this strange advantage. And, and LP is a, is a tiny bit shorter than most people, so her hips end up under the blocker's hips, which allows her this, this sort of advantage of getting around them, I, in my opinion. It's I think, a little tougher, you think, to get a lock in that in that. I, I, th I think so. Yeah. I just, when, I, when I'm playing roller derby and I'm jamming, I know that... Um, when I can be over someone's hips or under someone's hips, I feel more effective. Um, so when I watch somebody like LP or Midge, you know, or Pootie Tang, and they're, you know, a little bit different in height, um, I don't know, revolving. Multiplayer block on LP. LP. That's two yeah. in one game. Was was the other a crusher earlier? It was, it was Crouton, actually, oh, okay. earlier so who got a multiplayer. On the hoods. That's interesting and um, definitely something that the Hoods will be talking about I'm, after the game, I'm, I'm sure. I'm going to guess it's it's from trying to use an assist. Yeah, oh, totally, and, yes. And just happening happening to be in the wrong place. Well, and you know what? Is Disco on the track? Because she's really she's not, but she's really good at recognizing that and capitalizing on that. If she sees a jammer holding on to uh, another teammate, she'll she's run into their arm. That, yeah. Totally. Makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't you? She's super. Yeah, she's very smart. So obviously, one of these other girls that's on the track is also very smart. That jam came to an end. Now that jam was a 14-10 uh, jam. So the Hood's getting a four point gain uh, there. But I think with one minute 43, it's gonna be really tough to make up that uh, big differential we got going on. It's only nine, I don't know, it's a lot. It's 90 something, yeah. Uh, so hey, just sit back and enjoy the rest of the game. This has been some hard hitting, beautiful action going on here. Yeah. Her Majesty versus uh, Shredder, Shredder Wheats. Shredder, Shredder, Shredder. Her Majesty out first, Shredder Wheats out, not too far behind her. Now it's a race to the pack. Her Majesty coming in and gonna keep going. It looks like no, she calls it. I'm I. One more jam. Thirty seconds. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have twenty. Twenty some on the period. Twenty five, yeah. which is enough for one more jam. <laughs> Brad example agrees. <laughs> Therefore. It is written in stone and true. She who will be the jammer. She who jamming for this jam for the hoods, which may be the final jam. I have the tiger playing on the on the DJ I board. It's a good good, love good time for it. Yeah. She who playing a little defense there. Uh, Ova Achieva looking to take the inside line is taken in to the infield. Recycles. She who really fighting at the front side of the pack there. Stuck behind Sonic, Death you know, Monkey, and Suze. This is like, it, we know where there's like four red blockers and a white jammer and four white blockers and a It's just, it's bothersome. Oh, Ova Achieva winding up as Hooter gets out lead, looking at the clock. This is, this she is a powerful moment as a jammer. The period clock has expired and Hooter has a minute 17 remaining and it's this what do I do do I run it out 
Do I, I call it? I think I'm she's, tired. I want to call it. They're the telling me to keep going. I know. It's whatever you want to do now because it's such a big differential. The other jammer's out. Yeah. It, it's not going to make that much of an impact, but yeah. it's fun to see the game keep going. Yeah, it's true. And there's always the chance that the other jammer will yeah. F something up. Yeah, it's true. Plus, but there's this, great, there there's really this great song playing, so why not? There yeah, she is really calm and amazing, but... She's also not a jammer. This so, is true. I mean, if I were Hooter, I'd probably keep going too and just like be rocking out to Eye of the Tiger. Why not? You know, like, boom. Plus, look at that. She's making it look like easy and stuff. All right, unofficial final is 256 to 164. The Hood's keeping the differential under the century mark, which is. It's just big. So I know it's unofficial, but I don't think there's going to be that big of a, a math mistake on the scorekeeper's parts. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one for the Orange Crushers. Great game by both teams, though. And, I mean, the the Hoods come in strong from the beginning. Yeah. Came back into the half, coming in really strong. But I think ultimately the Crushers were just able to turn it up just a little bit higher and and bring that yeah win. what i really loved about this game is that neither team had penalty troubles so many times um the outcome of a game is determined by which team has the least number of penalties and that was it could be the case today but i just i want to say that penalties were not really a factor the refs really let these ladies go out there and play roller derby which Absolutely. i really appreciated and really enjoyed i think it was more fun for me to watch um, I hope it was more fun for you fans out there in wherever you are land to watch if you're still sober enough to really have recognized. Alrighty, so we're going to wrap it up here. But I want to remind you before we go that there is a doubleheader right here at Rocky Mountain Roller Hockey. The Red Riding Hoods versus the Sugar Kill Gang. And then followed by the Doomsday Zs taking on the Denver Roller Derby Green Barrettes. That's April 25th. And then May 16th, 5280 Fight Club versus Gotham Girls Roller Derby. You definitely want to get your ticket and be here for that. Admittedly, you should come to that game. It's going to be awesome. Um, also, before we sign off, I just want to remind everyone to make sure to eat their Wheaties. Uh, honey bunches of oats. Or if you really prefer the cereal, like the, the, the sweet stuff, the Cap'n Crunch. Alrighty, so I'm Bangers and Smash. Phantom Menace. Thanks so much for joining us here on ColoradoSports.tv. Have a great evening, ladies Peace and gentlemen. Peace out.